Mm. All right, so we now, I see we are uh, now live. So mm. it is just uh, just after six o'clock on uh, Monday, May the 4th, 2020. Uh, so I would uh, like to uh, open up our, uh, our virtual town council meeting. Uh, start off with item one, call the, the meeting to order and move right to item two, approval of the agenda. And I believe uh, we do have one, there was one last uh, last change to the agenda. Uh, our clerk did send that out uh, just, to, just to add uh, uh, Dana, I believe. That's the only, that's the only change, uh, Kimberly, is that? Yes, it is. Okay, so if I could have an approval of the agenda, please, do I see a mover for that motion? <coughs> Moved by Councillor Burton, seconder. Seconded by Councillor Ostrander. Any further discussion on the agenda? Uh, seeing none, uh, I will uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Motion carried. So item three, declarations of interest. Any member of council have a declaration of interest this evening? <coughs> seeing none, item four is minutes of the previous council uh, meeting. Uh, we do have under 4.1 uh, the minutes from the special council meeting on April 22nd. 2020 and the motion is that the special council meeting minutes from April 22nd 2020 be accepted as presented. Do I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Shankar, uh, Councillor Young seconding. Uh, any uh, discussion on that set of minutes from April 22nd? Uh, seeing no comments then I'll call the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, so those uh, special uh, meeting of uh, those special council meeting minutes are approved. Uh, item five, excuse me, uh, communications and petitions, 5.1 action items, no action items this evening. 5.2 is the information items uh, distributed under separate cover. Uh, anyone have any uh, comments, questions on the information items uh, this evening? And recommendation being that the information items under separate cover be received and filed. Do I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Shankar, seconded by Councillor Jansman. Any further discussion on the information items or want to refer them on to uh, uh, staff or to a future discussion? <laughs> Seeing no, all in favor? Motions carry. So it takes us right into the heart of the agenda this evening. Uh, number of staff report six uh, is, uh, have I think four items there. So 6.1 starting off with staff report 27-2020. Uh, that's the COVID-19, the actions update uh, from uh, the CAO uh, dated of course tonight, May 4th. We do have three recommendations that will be coming out of that. Uh, but uh, before we get to the recommendations, if I could ask Mr. Armstrong to proceed through the report and. Uh, touch on all the highlights. There's uh, quite a bit there uh, this week, Matthew. So please uh, uh, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. So just uh, turning to page seven of your uh, package this evening, you'll notice that uh, there are a couple of uh, items that uh, have been updated in, in terms of the provincial orders. And that was in the fact that Friday, uh, May 1st, that they announced that there would be certain businesses that would be allowed to start operating uh, starting today at uh, the turn of midnight. So garden centers and nurseries will now be allowed to operate, but with curbside pickup and delivery only. Lawn and lawn care and landscaping are now uh, able to operate. And uh, the point with all of these is that they still have to maintain their uh, physical distancing as well as uh, infection uh, control guidelines and things like that. Uh, additional essential projects are allowed to move forward. Uh, such as shipping and logistics, broadband, telecommunications, digital infrastructure. Uh, projects are supporting the delivery of goods and services, municipal projects, colleges and universities, child care centers, schools, and site preparation. Uh, also, automatic and self-serve car washes uh, are allowed to uh, move forward. Auto dealerships, open by appointment only. Golf courses may prepare but are not allowed to uh, open uh, to the public as of yet and marinas are allowed to start preparing, but again, not open to the public as of yet. So uh, also with marinas, the uh, it's really for those that service uh, boats, uh, being able to, to uh, uh, do their spring um, opening and, and whatnot, uh, but the watercraft is not to be accessed from by the public, and therefore it would be secured to a dock and, uh, and the public would not be allowed to access that uh, particular vessel. From a federal government emergency order perspective, uh, I've just outlined and added that uh, their border remains closed until at least May 20th, at which time they'll review. 
through the town of Prescott uh, actions, uh, kind of just uh, continuing to uh, update on uh, several items there. Uh, just wanted to draw your attention to the bylaw uh, officer uh, reports. And one thing that we see as a recurring uh, item is uh, residents walking their dog without a leash. Uh, so we took a look at the uh, bylaw and uh, how it's currently written is that uh, dog owners must have control at all times, the ability to manage, direct, uh, restrict and restrain movements of the animal. However, it never mentions specifically leash. And so uh, there is a recommendation uh, here. Um, wasn't put in the, the list of recommendations, but certainly if uh, council wishes, we can move forward with it is for the purpose of uh, subsection 3.1, that a dog shall be deemed to be running at large when not on a leash in any place other than the premise of the dog owner. And this would allow uh, our bylaw enforcement to uh, remove that ambiguity from the current bylaw and uh, be able to move it forward. Uh, certainly, uh, based on Friday's announcements from the province, we do see that uh, the marina will likely operate at some point this year. We're not exactly sure when that will be, um, but certainly that gives us some uh, guiding uh, focus that we will be able to, uh, to have some type of season. Uh, following that, there's also the Centennial Pool opening uh, coming up June 1st, uh, the community pool party uh, towards the end of June, and then, of course, uh, Canada Day fireworks. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Dana just to review some of the uh, work that she's been doing and uh, and just walk council through some of that. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Hi, everyone. Um, so just to take you through, uh, lots of work happening from my end. Uh, first and foremost is our participation in the Leeds Grenville County Business Working Group that's been formed. So this group is comprised of, um, well, Leeds Grenville Economic Development uh, Department spearheaded it. And it consists of all townships and municipalities as members, as well as BIAs, chambers, our CFDC, CSE, uh, many other business support organizations, as well as representatives from our MP and MPP offices. So we've really just been disseminating information on a weekly basis. A survey was recently completed and we've received reports um, for the county as well as uh, municipal specific reports. So we did receive a report for Prescott, which I believe I did include as an attachment, but I'm happy to send that out uh, if anyone needs a copy of it. Um, impacts have definitely been significant as expected. The majority of the impact uh, has been on small to medium businesses, mostly located in the downtown core, um, mostly restaurants, retail and personal service providers, as well as accommodations uh, with an average of one to four employees. So. I think that sector is, is really going to be what I would recommend as our main focus coming out of this when it comes to trying to provide support services, resources and promotions uh, for these businesses to help them. As you know, there's a number of government programs that have been released as well, um, many of which businesses have been able to tap into, but I do have some concerns. There are a lot of limitations that have been noted to date. For example, the newest uh, program, the rental assistance program requires direct collaboration between the landlord and the tenant. The landlord actually has to initiate that application for the tenant uh, to receive the benefit. And I am hearing that not every landlord is, is necessarily moving forward with that. So it's, it is great to see that there are some benefits, but we are seeing some significant gaps. And I think a lot of the small to medium businesses aren't really in a position to take on additional debt. Um, there's not a lot available in the way of grants right now. And I think that would be of my primary concern. I am hearing some discussion um, about the potential of using CIP funding for uh, emergency assistance grants to businesses. I know there are some conversations happening with upper levels of government. So we'll see what comes out of that. Our, that program requires significant amendments. As you know, it's not something you can just change on the fly. Um, some of the other supports that we've been providing to businesses locally, we've uh, sponsored a free advertisement, a weekly ad in the South Grenville Journal which we're really pleased to see the uptake on that. A lot of businesses have been participating. So the plan is to continue running that on a weekly basis until I would say we get to pretty much a full reopening. 
Um, Coast FM 107.9 is all, also offering free business interviews to any businesses that would like to take them up on that. It's a great opportunity. And we're supporting a good news initiative that's uh, been spearheaded by the BIA that's uh, meant to highlight businesses and individuals that are engaging in COVID-19 related community supports. And we'll be rewarding um, uh, individual family or business uh, with Prescott Proud dollars on a weekly basis. And they'll be featured in the South Grenville Journal as well. And of course, we're actively tracking uh, programs, communicating them to businesses directly via email and our social media page, as well as the town website page. So I think that covers most of the updates. Um, the St. Lawrence Corridor also commissioned a survey geared more towards manufacturing production industries. They are definitely experiencing some impacts as well, um, mostly related to supply chain. A lot of them are requesting government supports. Some are definitely experiencing some, some business slowdowns and are exploring some of the new financing. Um, but our manufacturers and industries are definitely more able to take advantage of those programs. So I think in the long run, as I indicated before, significant impact is really going to be felt with our businesses in the downtown core. That's it for me. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. So just want to provide a couple of other uh, items that are covered in the report, an update on long-term care homes in uh, the town of Prescott. I had a discussion with the health unit and they confirmed that neither Mayfield retirement residents or Wellington House have any suspected cases or had, are not an outbreak. And so kudos to, to them to be able to, uh, to really have uh, implemented those infection control procedures so that uh, they're, they're keeping their residents safe. Uh, also, the health unit is visiting all uh, homes not in outbreak to uh, just review the situation, uh, provide any uh, assessments of vulnerabilities or risks uh, that there might be. And uh, thus far, there's been no concerns uh, from Mayfield or Wellington House uh, as to their current setup. A uh, compost site, uh, you'll remember that uh, we began mid-April to open the compost site and uh, it's now running three days a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays from 10 to 4. And now that uh, with the new announcement that landscaping uh, companies and uh, lawn care will be able to start working uh, under the, the guidelines provided by the province, uh, we thought it would be a good time to have a discussion around the commercial fees. So, uh, we've developed kind of two possible commercial fees um, and we would actually suggest implementing both. One would be a small commercial pass, which would be for $75. It entitles you to five loads uh, dropping off with an average cost of $15 per load. If you are a, a larger commercial venture that uh, will have regular loads uh, bringing into the Prescott compost site, then our suggestion would be a $250 uh, commercial pass for the season limited number of uh, accesses and then uh, if you base it on the fact that perhaps there's 25 loads then it would be an average of ten dollars per load so those are two things that uh, that we uh, are included in the recommendations that uh, you'll see in front of you this evening and certainly we wanted to be able to um, provide those options we looked at other municipalities in uh, throughout eastern ontario and specifically leeds grumble and many of them implement a, uh, a commercial fee for just because it, it costs more uh, when you have that type of volume for chipping and uh, processing all of the, the compost. And so that's really the reason for the fee. It's absolutely free for um, residents, residents and uh, residential users for uh, those in Prescott, but then uh, we thought implementing the commercial fee would be uh, appropriate in this case. There's also the, uh, just giving you an update on the waiving of the late payment fees for water and wastewater billings. And so uh, I reached out to the other three municipalities as well as RSL, Rio St. Lawrence Utilities, uh, to notify them of our wish uh, to uh, waive those late payment fees. The other municipalities, uh, well received uh, from all of them, are really receptive and they're just going through their approval processes. So I believe uh, at least one of them is already approved. One of them is, uh, I believe, approving uh, this evening and one likely tomorrow evening. So uh, as soon as that the gets done, uh, RSL stands at the ready to implement it uh, and uh, move forward. Uh, second last item is the Bell upgrade uh, to five in the town of Prescott. So you'll see that there's been a number of uh, areas that they're, they've been working on. 
round poles, adding anchors, adding uh, boxes in various spots in town. And that is because they are upgrading the uh, infrastructure network to be fiber optic. And so to be able to offer town residents uh, five. So I think we had this discussion earlier and one of the projects that we had on uh, the slate for this year was the replacement of the uh, LED lighting and uh, specifically on Water Street, uh, that's about a third of the number of lights that needs to be replaced. And it's those lights that are actually decorative in nature. And so uh, we uh, did work on uh, being able to uh, try to uh, include that as part of the project, that wasn't successful, but, uh, but certainly um, to replace those 12 lights, then it would cost approximately 39,000. We did get multiple quotes to make sure that the, the hardware cost was the best that uh, we could be getting and then uh, using the locked in uh, hourly rates for the vendor. So um, at this point, we're going to ask uh, if uh, council would be willing to pass a motion this evening to proceed with that. Um, they are working on Water Street in terms of the installation of the five network. And that's why this one's a little bit more uh, time sensitive and uh, being able to just make sure that they're able to continue their work uh, on that project. And then finally, just following up on Dana's report, uh, we see that uh, being able to engage in um, our commercial and industrial sectors in the town of Prescott is going to be uh, vitally important to being able to uh, recover from COVID-19. And so the, the suggestion being put forward is to create a uh, economic recovery working group or task force uh, led by the mayor and uh, a couple of members of council and uh, some key business leaders, along with uh, uh, several of our partners throughout uh, the, the town, uh, such as the Community uh, Futures Program, uh, CSE, as well as BIA and Chamber of Commerce. So um, that's, I think, is a synopsis of the report that you see in front of you and the reasoning for the recommendations being put forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Armstrong. I'll open it up for discussion. and. Uh, just before we get to the recommendations, we'll take those uh, one at a time, but I'll open it up first. Any discussion or any comments from uh, from any members of council on items not included in the recommendations on the, the many other items that were in that report tonight? Councilor Shanker. Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask if, um, how we're gonna, know that the person bringing the compost is commercial or private? So if I may, Mr. Mayor? Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. It, uh, so um, we have been recording uh, everyone's name, address, as well as their license plate number to, uh, to make sure that uh, they're uh, private residents uh, uh, delivering to the compost site. And then uh, anyone that we've seen multiple times and uh, that are large volume, then that leads us to believe that they're commercial. But uh, certainly we're aware of the, a couple of the, the landscaping companies in town. Uh, they've already uh, mentioned their intention of being able to access the compost site. And uh, we briefed them that we were bringing this forward to council. Um, obviously they, uh, they understood and, uh, and then being able to uh, offer this option was our uh, was our alternative, and th that's why the, the two steps. Maybe it's a commercial that only has a couple of uh, uh, Prescott residents uh, versus ones that have many. So that's what, how we were doing it. As part of the sign up process for the commercial, we will be asking for the uh, license plates of the uh, particular vehicles they'll be using, as well as providing them with a pass. Very very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Shanker. I have Councillor Young, then Councillor Burton, please. Matthew, would this include tree removal? If a tree service comes down and cuts down a tree? Uh, yes, as long as it's under six inches in diameter. Anything over that, um, it, it goes, as, we would not accept it because of the size. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Young. Councillor Burton, please. Thank you. Uh, Matthew, are we going to have um, those right at the compost site? Are we going to uh, or reach out to those uh, contractors um, to have them sign up to be able to go to the compost site? So through you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, absolutely, we will uh, do a social media blitz as well as put it in the paper, as well as 
uh, reach out to the number of uh, contractors that, that we're aware of and that are regular users. Um, what we're trying to do is avoid um, kind of the exchange of cash and things like that at the compost site itself. So absolutely we'll do it through a contactless uh, delivery of uh, their passes and taking the information and processing the payments. So, uh, but absolutely we have every intention of getting the information out there and so that uh, people are aware of how to sign up. I think, I think it's absolutely fantastic that we are supporting uh, the local contractors in this way. Thank, Thank you very, very much, uh, Councillor Burton. Great points. Uh, anything further on items not in the recommendations? Is then we'll, we'll go through the recommendations uh, uh, one, two, three. If there's if there's nothing else uh, with regards to the rest of the report, okay. Uh, so with that, we'll go to the first recommendation on the economic recovery task force. I just want to speak to that really briefly before asking for the motion. I did uh, bring this forward to staff last week and talk to Councillor Shankar and Jansman about that. Both actually recommended uh, some members for the task force that have been, uh, have been put on it for now. Uh, basically, we see this as a way of reaching out to, uh, to our business community at a time when there are a lot of questions out there on how to reopen, how this process is going to work. And uh, uh, I did notice uh, after we had our, uh, our, our corridor meeting uh, the other day, there are a lot of questions out there and I think uh, everybody's sort of seeking some guidance right now. And as, as, as good as the, the United Counties group is, it's, Dana, you could correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I think it's 50, 52 people in on the calls. So it's actually, it's a pretty big group. And this is more of a, more of a way we can directly listen to our own local businesses so they can tell us uh, what they would like from us, if we could help in terms of advocating uh, with the provincial federal governments and, and, and so forth. So I do thank uh, Councillor Shankar and Jans uh, for agreeing to, uh, to to help with this and uh, get it going. And uh, I think uh, some, good, some good information here from uh, from businesses and report back to council on uh, on what they're seeing and what we can do to uh, help bolster our businesses as they begin the reopening uh, under some what, what are going to be some interesting circumstances. There will obviously be some. Uh, uh, we're into this new normal. There's going to be everything's going to be a little different at least for a while. And I think anything we can do to uh, work with them in advance of that will help us in terms of uh, their economic recovery and also allow us to better work with them in order to, uh, to uh, make sure the provincial guidelines are followed and, and we're all doing the best we can to continue to battle COVID-19, but also get our businesses back up and running again. Uh, so with that, I, I would ask if there's uh, someone uh, to get this on the table, uh, someone willing to make, uh, wait, make that motion. Moved by Councillor Shankar, I believe uh, seconded by Councillor Jans. I think she just just beat Lee out. Uh, further discussion on that, uh, Councillors uh, Shankar and Jansman, any comments? I want to thank you both for uh, the support on this and for bringing forward some members from the community uh, that will sit on the group uh, with, with with those of us. So, any comments, please? Uh, I think it's a great. It's going to be a good idea. It's, it's good to involve uh, other members of the public. Um, and business members, and I think it's a good, good step going forward to, to be proactive in trying to get economic, you know, economic recovery for our area. Thank you, Councillor Jansman. I I did all those comments from Councillor Shankar. Um, just reading the comments alone in um, the attachment that Dana put in her report, there is a lot of room there that we can uh, we can address on a more micro level than, than what the county or St. Lawrence corridor could do. Much more personal. Thank, thank you. Uh, other discussion, comments, questions? Councilor Young. Um, I like the idea of involving the public. I just wondered why, why this would be an advantage over having the entire council sit in on these discussions. Uh, just because of the work, the working group idea of it, and uh, we would end up having, I mean, we're already at, I think we're 12 to 15 members now with the three councillors, and uh, councils could definitely well uh, open to sit in on, uh, on the meetings, of course, and provide uh, information. We'll make sure, obviously, these will be Zoom meetings, uh, but the th I think the three members makes the most sense on that, but then we also get into I'll ask the clerk and, uh, and the CAO how we can do that with everyone at the table, because then you're, you're backing yourselves into a full council meeting. 
Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, the working group allows you to have more informal discussions with participation from the other group members as well, instead of a formal council meeting format. I thought that should be made public. Sure. Further discussion? Council Burton? Thank you. I think it's a fantastic idea that we have some uh, key uh, business people in town wanting to participate in this task force. I would um, actually like to change it to the Prescott Economic Recovery Task Force. Uh, because it's just, uh, no offense, Mayor Todd, but it's just not about the mayor. It's about all of council. And I think that needs to be said that we are all in this together and we all want to move forward and um, <clears throat> look at our economic, um, our whatever it's going to be at that time. But uh, let's be ready and let's be ready together. So I would Perfect. like to... Uh, change if possible. Certainly, I don't care what the name is. I just want to get out there and support our businesses. But I, I did propose it. I will be chairing it. So I obviously have a cent central role. So I, I mean, whatever the name is at the end of the day, I don't care. Uh, but I, I do think that the, the mayor has to take a, a strong role on this uh, in, in the, the, uh, the position that I have. Uh, and obviously, I'm, I'm well positioned as a, as our member in the St. Lawrence Corridor, and also a liaison with the United Counties Council. Uh, so whatever we call it at the end of the day is fine by me, but I just want to get it started and get us all sitting at the table. Any further discussion? Council McConnell? Um, United Counties Council is all well and good, but uh, essentially what we're concerned with here is the resurgence of our business community, in particular in the downtown and, and off on the north end as well, because uh, if you go out there, there's not a lot happening in, in most days where you're liable to find an awful lot of cars in some parking lots uh, normally. So what I would uh, be wondering about here as a former small business person who knows how quickly the end of the month comes around with the rent payment and the electric payment and the gas payment and all that, even if you don't have any employees, I would like to see this committee take a look at um, what council is now uh, sending the way of, of our um, economic commission, so to speak, the BIA, if we can redirect or find some other money that we can put right in the hands of our small business people that may not be able to access these government um, grants. Um, and, and as Teresa mentioned, I did hear several comments or read several comments about that in, in what was provided as well. Um, in the case of a lot of small business, uh, what's being offered is a loan and a lot of small businesses really a loan is not an option. They are either loaned out right now and can't afford any more payments or they don't want a loan simply because their income is, is such that they have to operate without a loan. They don't have the money coming in even under normal circumstances to pay a loan. So while we have uh, members of council on this committee, and I, I think it's an excellent idea of yours, Mayor Todd, that we take a look to see if we can redirect some of the uh, funds that we are putting towards, at least the downtown right now, towards direct payment to, um, to uh, small business people. Thank you. Yeah, very good, very good point. Something we'll, we'll put on there. Just to, just to note, uh, in terms of membership, we already have uh, uh, one leading industrial uh, member on the board. I won't name names right now until we confirm the whole group. We have another uh, commercial owner in the North End on board. Uh, I think three people confirmed from the downtown, including a BIA representative. So we are trying to spread it out. So there's good representation, all the business sectors, downtown, North End, and, uh, and industrial. 
so that that is an excellent point and i'm sure that's uh something that's going to be raised uh because there is obviously that huge concern now that the biggest support for small business seems to be just well here you take take these loans and uh that's obviously uh putting a lot of burden on small businesses so i think that's something we need to uh we need to look at as well and that that'll definitely be on the agenda for when we uh when we convene the group i have uh, councillor young and then councillor jansman please Brett, the other point that I wanted to make, which I forgot initially, was that um, all of these actions, recommendations <clears throat> from this group would have to come back through council to be approved because many of them will involve spending money, I'm sure. So that has to be approved by council, correct? Absolutely. Uh, but w the way I see the group, though, in, in many ways, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there is going to be, are going to be requests uh, for direct actions, but I see this as a lot of it will be information sharing. We'll be hooking them up with provincial and federal representatives because the, the extent of this crisis is obviously well beyond uh, any one municipality or even group of municipalities to, uh, to properly tackle. So I, 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 I obviously everything that comes from this group goes back to council, but at the same time, I think a lot of it's going to be bigger than that. And I think it's going to be advocating for certain things with the uh, with the feds and the province here and making sure both uh, MP Barrett and MPP Clark's office are, are aware of this as well. And we're also tying in, I think we've looked at uh, CSE and uh, of course, Grenville Community Futures as two adjunct members here as well to be able to provide that uh, additional support beyond the municipality. So I see this uh, like a lot of this is, is gonna be more dialogue and getting people together. And if there are any requests for direct funding or anything like that, uh, anything that involves us of course comes back to the council table. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Jansman. I just wanted to uh, mention before we leave this topic that uh, just a thank you to Dana for all the work that she has been doing on the economic development angle. And she has uh, paved the way in a lot of ways, I think, in, um, in what this committee will, will end up doing. And uh, by, for instance, for, for her to already have reached out to the 13 people who uh, responded to the countywide survey it's just a nice personal touch and, and helping one-on-one, -on -one, you know? And, and uh, I also uh, wanted to thank her for keeping the BIA so involved with, with everything that she, uh, she's been doing the last few weeks. Thank you. Absolutely, thanks a lot for all of this, Dana. And I think uh, this, this group getting together will maybe take a little of the burden off of you and also probably add a little burden, I'm, I'm afraid as well, because obviously we've got a ways to go here as we uh, try to assist our businesses through this, uh, uh, this very difficult time. Uh, so seeing, I think we discussed this one uh, pretty much around the table. So we'll return to the question and uh, call the vote. All in favor? Uh, so mo motion carried. I didn't see anyone, anyone opposed. So uh, that one is approved. Uh, so we'll move on to recommendation two, and that's that council approve the implementation of a commercial uh, compost site drop-off fee as outlined below. Small commercial compost drop-off pass, five loads of compost material, $75, would average $15 per load. And the second is unlimited commercial compost drop-off pass, $250 for a lim unlimited dumping of $250 for a limited unlimiting dumping access for the season. Uh, so 25 loads average cost would be $10. Do I have a mover for that, please? Moved by Councillor Young, seconded by Councillor Burton. Did I see your hand there? Mm -hmm. Councillor yep. Burton seconding. Uh, we've had a little discussion on this already. Any further please. comments? Councillor McConnell, please. Uh, a comment was made, and I can't remember who made it, that it's a no cost to our local citizens. It's for commercial contractors, but at the end of the day, it is a cost to our local citizens because uh, Mayor Todd, I work lawn bowling next door to you. I know somebody cuts your grass for you and uh, presumably they take that grass away and have to dispose of it. So if you cut your own grass and you take it back there, it's not costing you anything. If they take your grass back there and dispose of it, it is costing them. So at the end of the day, they're gonna charge you more to cut your grass. So it is costing the local residents to get rid of their stuff back there. Now, unfortunately, given the time of the year that we're looking at this, I suspect most commercial uh, lawn care people have already made contracts with everybody in town that they're gonna cut grass for this summer. 
So they probably can't go back now and say, okay, well, we're going to have to raise you two bucks because we got to pay to get rid of your grass. So they're going to have to swallow it. Um, unfortunate. This is the type of thing, if we were going to do it, we should have done it last fall or early last winter before they uh, signed their uh, spring and summer contracts. So I, I don't know. I'm kind of torn with this when I see it as kind of a money-making thing in some respect, but I do think it is really just uh, throwing the burden back on our taxpayers eventually because it is going to hit them in the wallet when they get charged more to have their grass or their brush or whatever taken away. I, I would think that if people who are contracting to cut grass left it on the customer's property in a paper bag, then we would be compelled to take it anyway. So I don't know. It's um, I, I honestly don't think I can support this. Uh, thank you very much, Councilor McConnell. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, was this uh, looked at? Do we have a lot of lawn care companies dumping back there? Is this going to, uh, I, I do, I will note because Councilor McConnell brought it up. I know my guy, uh, they uh, they cut here and they don't take anything away except for spring cleanup, which they're actually not doing this year because of the COVID-19 issues. But a lot of places do do that uh, that cleanup and, and, and does end up with some extra yard waste taken back. So that would go back onto onto the consumer at the end of the day. Have we had any feedback from any lawn care companies in the area or anyone doing this, that this is going to be an added burden to them? So uh, the, the vast majority of other municipalities either charge very large amounts for commercial drop-off or don't accept it at all. So we worked more on a reasonable uh, level. Um, some of the other municipalities charge by weight. We don't have the ability to do that, um, but uh, when you're talking about waste, you're probably talking 40 to $60 a ton of materials. So that's why we came up with something that's a, a, a much more reasonable and, and in uh, what we felt was a, a more fair. And really it's just to defray the cost of uh, that extra volume, um, which wouldn't be uh, necessarily there. Uh, Councilor McConnell is exactly right. It, uh, if it's left at the side of the the curb and uh, they call in for the, the chipping service or if it's in uh, the bags at, uh, on the last Wednesday of the month, then absolutely we would pick it up, um, paper bags, uh, just as a point of clarity. And so uh, certainly there's that, or if the resident decides to drop it off themselves, they always have that uh, ability free of charge. Um, but this was for uh, contractors that produce a lot of volume. And so that's uh, the reason for it. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, Councilor McConnell, anything anything further 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 to that follow up? <clears throat> Excuse me. No, um, I, I understood the the purpose of the whole thing when I read it through and, and I thought it over. And granted, if you have somebody like uh, I'm just going to use D and D Tree Service for example, not that I want to be seen as picking on them by any means, but I see their trunk of. If they take a 100 foot maple tree down in somebody's yard and drop the whole thing at our, uh, at our facility, which I've seen wood like three foot round in the middle, so those are pretty big trees. Um, I am not so sure that we should be taking that, but the normal grass pickup, like, I mean, I see people around town cutting people's lawns and their tractors have these big things on the back and their the grass catchers, the grass goes into there and that winds up getting emptied in our, uh, in our facility. That's what I'm kind of uh, against as far as charging for that type of thing. It is coming off our lawns. And if it was going into a paper bag, they could leave it at the person's house, but um, it, I can see where this is supportable, but I, it, I, I'm not, I'm not going to support it. I don't think we need to be doing that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor McConnell. We'll open it up for other comments and questions. Any more discussion on that recommendation, Councillor Jansman? I was happy to see that part of the report did include uh, a comparison to what other municipalities do. 
and it's it's um, some, it's something that's not new in other municipalities, apparently. And if this is one way that we can institute some revenue this year, I think it's 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 a great option to exercise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further comments on that recommendation? Seeing no further comments, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. So on to item three, and that uh, motion reads that council approve the upgrading of the streetlights on Water Street to LED to coincide with the Bell Canada upgrades currently being done to make Bell 5 technology available in the town of Prescott at an approximate cost of $39,000. Do I have someone willing to make that motion, please? Moved by Councillor Young, seconded by Councillor McConnell. Any further discussion here? Councillor Young? Uh, don't forget this is an energy saving um, option as well. Uh, we, will, uh, we will save some revenue on the hydro used. And we've been planning on doing this for five years. It must be five years anyway. And uh, it's about time we finished it. So let's move forward with it. Yeah, I believe it's uh, this stretch. And what have we got? Some of Mackenzie and Fort Town left in addition. Yep. So we've, we've still got a few more lights to finish, but we're getting uh, awfully close now. But the vast majority of the town is, is, is done. Although there is, there's, there's one or two, there are one or two lights in town that have never been done. There's one on James, I think we were talking about the other day for whatever reason. Uh, James or Jess, if I forget which now, but there's, there's a couple. If anyone knows of any others in their neighborhood, let staff know about that so we can take a look at that as we move forward. I, I think there's one at uh, King and Edward as well in that area. Yeah, there was one by the uh, by the smoke shop, the former Max as well, right north, further north on Edward too. Just a couple in some odd spots. And I think there were reasons why they weren't done at the time, but we should probably circle back around if, if we don't, if we haven't already looked at it. Any, uh, any further comments on that recommendation? Councilor McConnell and then Councilor uh, There was one on the 600 block of Jessup Street that I drew Dan's attention to a year ago. Or whether it's still there. I didn't get up around there lately to, to notice. But I was going to ask Matthew. Matthew brought this up at our Friday meetings, Friday morning meetings, probably, probably six months ago now when we discussed it. Um, and he mentioned that uh, Bell was changing things on the poles. He was going to try and get them to pay for changing the lights as well. And at that time, he was talking about the same type of street lights that we have outside of my place here on James Street now, not the fancy ones that we have downtown. So the figure that he floated to us and 39 really doesn't agree. So I'm, I'm presuming that the 39 is the difference between those lights uh, and, and the uh, more decorative ones. So uh, he can comment on that. And the other question I have, that he mentioned that he put that out to tender a variety of companies. So is this exactly the same as the ones on King Street? Is it in the ballpark or what? Thank you. Okay. I'll answer a couple Thank of things you. there. Well, through you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, yep, we were working with Bell uh, along that line. Uh, they felt that, um, you know, that asking them to pay for the uh, the street lights was a little bit beyond the scope of their project, and so um, that's the the figure you see today is the figure for uh, completely replacing those. Uh, it's substantially more expensive to replace it with the uh, the look of the ones that uh, that we're suggesting, and my understanding is it's to match the ones that are in Riverwalk and on King Street. And so uh, I will confirm that, uh, but certainly that's uh, the, the intention there. My understanding is that we have approximately between 34 and 36 lights left to replace, and this does approximately a third of them. Uh, that being said, we estimated about 150,000 to replace all of those remaining lights. And so uh, we're actually doing a little bit better than budget so far, so uh, happy with that. But we'll see uh, what uh, remains of the, the rest of the lights in terms of uh, the cost. But the decorative ones are approximately uh, over two and a half times 
uh, the price of just the the standard uh, that you would have on other posts uh, throughout town. You'd actually have to think we're doing quite a bit better on budget than if these are the more these are the more expensive decorative heads. So I would be interested to see what the final number is for everything because the others are obviously uh, significantly cheaper. So that's that's good news at the end that hopefully we can do this uh, quite a bit cheaper than had been forecast. Anything further, Councilor McConnell? No, asked and answered. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Ostrander, and then Councilor Young. Uh, just. Just wondering here, it doesn't say specifically, but I take it uh, these upgrades could be done in this working season we're in now, roughly? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we would uh, get going on ordering. Uh, usually this is about an eight week uh, uh, lead time to get the uh, lights themselves in, uh, but the intention is to have it done in the next two to three months. Good, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Ostrander, Councilor Young. Matthew, is there any chance that we could afford to do all 36? Absolutely. So we'll get that to that uh, report in uh, a few minutes from now. But okay. um, that's my recommendation is to complete that project this year. Also, we had previously mentioned that uh, the 600,000 that we'd uh, done the all of the previous work, we had never actually gone out to debt for that. So this would be rolled into that. We would uh, apply, uh, get the, uh, the debt which would then help our uh, cash flow position. So that's one of the projects that I, I would absolutely suggest that we do this year because there is not a cash flow uh, implication for it and it allows us to actually save money going forward. Anything further, Councillor Young? No, no. Thank you. Uh, so just in one other comment on this for people, because this has been a, a bit of a uh, source of some debate around uh, town in the area and I saw another another online post today about it just uh, to let everyone know that the work that's ongoing now has nothing to do with 5G installation in the town of Prescott this is all Bell 5 they are working in town now they were on Dibble Street again today they've been around uh, all over as they complete the 5 installation this is just something that coincides with that um, it's good timing but there's no 5G uh, towers or anything being installed uh, at this time in town, this is all a Bell Canada upgrade of their service to Prescott to, uh, to five. So seeing no further discussion, I'll call the question on that, uh, that last, that third recommendation uh, from the report. All in favor? Uh, seeing everyone's hand up, so that is approved. Uh, before we move on, I do have one thing I wanna bring forward for a quick discussion. I apologize for adding this uh, very, uh, very late but it's something that's just come up really in the last couple of hours with uh, our boat launch. I wanted to just go around the table quickly and I apologize to staff for the ambush on this one as well, because this has just really happened. I understand Edwardsburg Cardinal is moving to open their boat launches as of Wednesday. They just had a meeting uh, this evening. And I think that is going forward from what I understand. I was just uh, talking at the start of this evening with uh, Mayor Baker in Brockville and uh, we we're looking at possibly coordinating the opening of the Brockville and Prescott uh, boat ramps uh, for later this week. It's not something uh, I, I, I am. I am actually personally. I'm, I'm in favor of it at this point. We are moving uh, towards more opening uh, of, of all these facilities, and with Edwardsburg Cardinal doing it, Leeds in the Thousand Islands opening, and a lot of our neighbors starting to look at this. I think it's it's something we should take a look at. But I want to get uh, everybody's opinion on this, and let's let's make a decision on this. Uh, if we could look at potentially Friday uh, to to reopen. And uh, so let's open it up for, uh, for discussion. Obviously we're in potentially a slightly different situation than some areas because the, uh, the boat ramp is of course right in uh, Centennial Park. It is going to draw a fair bit of traffic, uh, but at the same time, you know, we are moving forward to more openings. The province did mention about readying the marinas on Friday. So this would be a, a step towards that. Uh, the emergency group did agree we would look at this again on May 12th. So this would move it up to a, an opening of uh, May the 8th. So I'll put that forward uh, tonight. I'll ask, I'll ask staff first, Mr. Armstrong, is it possible we could do this just by, because we have to pull the, the, uh, the barricades out of that area and just ready it, but otherwise like that's, that's the only prep work that we need to do down there, correct? Well, that's correct. A number of the other municipalities have been putting uh, communication signage. And so uh, that's a consideration. Um, also, uh, if there are any uh, issues, I would like to understand uh, if uh, 
the wish is to have it attended uh, to it or not, or just allow for um, people to, to be use it responsibly. Well, we'd have to still have bylaw look at it. I, I don't see any way around that. We would still have to have some monitoring there, just like with the parks and everything else on the weekends. But other than that, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to have to open at some point. Uh, it would either probably be this coming weekend or the weekend after, after uh, we, we review it on the 12th. So I said, I'm, I'm kind of agnostic about this. I, I sort of feel we should move towards it and it's good to coordinate with our neighbors. But other than that, it's just whatever everyone thinks around the table here. Sorry to add this at the last minute, but this really has developed just in the last uh, 24 hours or so. And there's been some movement just in the last hour, hour or so since we started our meeting. I think I saw Councillor Young's hand up. Thank you, Mayor Todd. It was on my list of questions to ask for later on in the meeting, but um, I'm in full agreement of opening it. Um, our neighbors have done it. Pickerel season is about to open, and I know a lot of fishermen are very eager to get out there. Thank you very much, Councillor Young. Councillor Burton? Thank you. I think it's a great idea. I think that um, people will respect the social distance and take their time and uh, launch their boats. Um, and it gives, it gives people an outing. And these fishermen have been probably just itching to get out there and uh, spend some time with their family. And, and why not uh, be able to support that with restrictions? Thank you very much, Council Shankar. <clears throat> Thank you. I, I think, um, you know, the public and the, the residents of Prescott have been very good with following all the rules and, and doing everything that we've kind of asked of them. And if, if other municipalities are now taking steps towards uh, lessening restrictions, and you know, the argument is two people in a car, two people in a boat, uh, I'm all in favor of opening up the boat ramps. Thank you very much. Further comments? So I, I guess it sounds like everyone's in favor of this. Could I ask for a motion to that effect that we direct staff uh, to begin the preparations and open the, uh, the municipal boat launch at uh, Centennial Park on Friday, uh, May the 8th? Mm -hmm. uh, so Councillor Burton, you're prepared to move that? Yes, I am. Thank you. Seconded by uh, Councillor Shankar, just, uh, just beat you, Ray. Any further discussion, any input from staff on this? We'll review it. We have our emergency uh, control group meeting on Friday this week, so we'll review it a little bit then. This, this this moves us up a few days, but it's not that different from our original uh, our original schedule. And as everyone said, I, I think it's 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 time we start looking at this. Mr. Armstrong, any other feedback? Uh, we'll want to make sure that the marina is still off limits to the public. Um, that's certainly a concern, and um, so that would be my. Uh, only point as well as um, we did have initially and continue to have people uh, congregating in that area. So uh, that's also something that we'll need to keep an eye on. Thank yeah, you. we'll have to make sure we continue to look at that with bio on the weekends as we go forward. But other than that, I think uh, hopefully as uh, councillors mentioned, it's a good, good time to move forward with this. Any further discussion? All those in favor, uh, Councillor McConnell, do you have a comment? Uh, I, I'm fully in favor of opening the boat ramp. Um, as I've walked through Centennial Park, I, I've, I felt it's kind of a shame that it hasn't been opened because, and I understand the reason for it, but if I want to back down there and throw my kayak in and go for a single paddle by myself, I can't do it, which is kind of silly because I'm social distancing out in the water. The only thing I would be concerned with, and I'm not sure how we would um, uh, tackle that we do have signage down there that says i believe no overnight parking as far as boat trailers go so i have no problem with uh, somebody wanting to throw their boat in and go fishing for the pickerel season or councillor shankar throwing his boat in and taking his family for a ride but we have a tremendous amount of people from out of town ottawa gatineau uh, well i guess gatineau isn't really welcome in ottawa right now but um what happens if we get people down here from out of town with large trailers, parking, parking overnight? Uh, 
previous to this, I think we they could buy a ticket to park or something down at the marina. The marina is not open. Uh, how are we going to address that? We should know before we, we open it. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, any comment on that? But I, I mean, that is the one vulnerability we have. We, we do have a lot of uh, Quebec traffic in town, even outside of the marina and the boat launches. Uh, but there's a lot of Quebec traffic in town right now, even, even regardless. There have been a lot of vehicles uh, uh, parked in the downtown core overnight lately. I'm not sure what the, uh, the situation is there, just Quebec plated cars and nothing against the, the, the fine people of the province of Quebec. But that is just a little bit of a concern now that we're going to bring a problem into the community from areas that are more harder hit. And that's obviously the risk we take uh, with this. But Mr. Armstrong, do you have a comment on how we'd address that? I assume it's just by law, by law, by law would have to take a, a hard line on this for overnight parking and violations of the, uh, the regulations right now. Yep. So currently there's no overnight parking down at the boat ramp itself. I don't believe bar, uh, boat trailers are allowed in the marina parking lot. And so uh, really there's, there's not uh, many um, around. So if the assumption is that they're going to be fishermen, the overnight uh, issue shouldn't be an issue. Um, and then uh, if they can't obtain area at the marina, then uh, again, um, besides uh, moving on and dock or launching their boat and moving on, then, uh, then we would see that as being the, the logical actions. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, Councilor McConnell, any, any follow up to that? No, not really. As I said, I'm in favor of opening the boat ramp. I'm just, uh, I, it, it's a potential problem that we have and it should be something that we decide or staff decides rather uh, what they're going to do about it if it occurs before it incurs. Uh, better to be ready and not have the problem or then have to deal with it uh, after the fact. Absolutely. So staff will prepare as much as possible for that the weekend and we're just going to have to see, I guess, if that's the one that's the one risk of how many, how much uh, external traffic it's going to draw to the area. But that's the one good thing about Edwardsburg Cardinal, Prescott, and Brockville all being open at the same time. At least it'll spread it out, hopefully spread it out uh, across the area. And of course, all the Rideau, uh, everything up in the, on the Rideau is opening up now as well, and TLTI as well. So uh, a lot of us will be open. So hopefully that will spread the impact out somewhat. Do you have a further comment? Uh, just actually something else I was thinking about, is, and it's not the boat ramp, but it is related, but I know traditionally we have opened the marina on the 21st of May weekend, and it's somebody that walks to the marina every day, uh, every year I see boats coming up uh, well before the 21st of May weekend, so if we get people from Ottawa, Quebec, because we have a tremendous amount of people from Quebec that have their boats in our marina uh, if they somehow all of a sudden we find them tied up the marina what are we going to do Mr. Armstrong so that's why we have to be clear that at this point there is no public access to the marina so um, if we know who the owner of the boat is we'll call them have them uh, pull it out or have uh, we'll have them pulled out for them. Yeah, we obviously can't fool around with this stuff at this time. So uh, hopefully people will cooperate. The rules are going to be very clear. They'll be spelled out. And uh, we we'll just have to see how it goes and uh, address it as uh, the problems come up. I think we, we're, we're preparing for it as best as possible. All of these uh, situations uh, with, with COVID, and this is just adds another dimension to it, but everybody's been good so far in town for the most part. We've had great cooperation. So hopefully, you know, this will go well again, but I don't think we can completely make it uh, idiot proof, sadly <laughs> enough. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay, motion, uh, motion is carried. Thanks everyone. And again, sorry to spring that on everyone at the last moment, but this is just something that developed uh, uh, quite recently. So moving on to 6.2, that's staff report 28-2020. That's our community grant program allocation uh, for 2020. And a single recommendation coming forward here, and that's that council approved the 2020 community grant allocations as outlined in staff report 
2020 in a total amount of $49,100 and that staff be directed to issue the second intake for community grants on June the 1st with a deadline for submissions on June 30th. Do I have a mover to get that item on the table, please? Uh, moved by Councilor Young, uh, seconded by Councilor Burton. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, please uh, take it away. Thank you very much. Um, previously on March 2nd, uh, this uh, pretty much exact same list was uh, reviewed and approved to go to council. Uh, since then, uh, obviously we've had COVID-19, uh, which has uh, kind of uh, made some decisions around uh, Connect Youth and uh, Food for All Bank. And so the original request for Food for All Bank was $4,000 and uh, Committee of the Whole had uh, approved $3,000, uh, $4,000 has been paid. Connect Youth, uh, $3,500 was their request and has been paid. And then uh, they made a request for an additional $500 due to COVID-related uh, expenses specifically. So the rest of the uh, items are, are there for review. Uh, continuing the Prescott uh, Zombie Walk uh, review request as part of the second intake, um, but uh, the, all of it was uh, in kind. And so uh, so good news from that perspective. Um, and then uh, certainly you're also noticing a couple of other in-kind uh, requests there as well. So. Uh, we did have a conversation with Shakespeare on Friday, who um, have canceled their official season uh, this year, but are still working towards the presentation of Mary Poppins uh, in the fall, as well as doing a number of other uh, community uh, outreach or um, cultural uh, presentations uh, in that fall timeframe when the, the time allows. So. Um, that's uh, why it remains as the uh, an amount for Shakespeare. Uh, certainly, they do have ongoing costs, as uh, uh, many organizations do, and um, that's uh, part of the reason for the uh, request as well. So, uh, without further ado, that uh, that's my report. Thank you Mary, uh, very much, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Open it up for uh, discussion, comments, and questions. Uh, anyone have any uh, questions uh, of Matthew on uh, that report? Councilor McConnell. Then well, Councilor <clears throat> Excuse me, it's certainly not a question on the report because the report was, was quite detailed and it's very easy to understand. But I was part of the uh, committee that, that, that looked at all these requests for grants and decided what we were gonna give to who. And I have to wonder, given the situation that we're in, so whether now is the time to approve these or not. So I have to ask, and Matthew, I'm sure will be able to provide me with the answer. Um, just because we vote to approve these, which essentially we've already done, uh, does that mean they're gonna get paid out right away? Because uh, with the situation we, we're in, we don't really know how it's going to develop. We could open up and all of a sudden find a month later that we got to close up again. Um, we have the soccer season this summer. We give uh, money to the soccer group. We don't know if that's going to go ahead. We have hockey next fall. We don't know if that's going to go ahead. We have figure skating next fall. We don't know what's going to happen there. Um, Shakespeare is not presenting their main shows this summer. Um, so it seems to me that uh, there is some question about if we should be giving out this money um, and when we should be giving out this money and maybe how much we should be given out. And uh, as a member of that committee, if we were sitting as a committee now, as opposed to when we, uh, first discuss this, I, I think our discussion would be quite a bit different. So perhaps Matthew can ask or answer that for me about uh, approval and disposition of the uh, dispensation of the money. Turn it through you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, just going through uh, the, the list. And so uh, one thing with minor hockey and figure skating is half of their season's already over and they achieved uh, the vast majority of that half season um, with how the, uh, the timing worked out. So, um, so they've already incurred uh, a fair amount of, of their costs for the year. 
and then we'll start back up in September. Uh, certainly, it's our council's uh, will as to when we would actually pay these out and if they want to uh, move forward with a, the uh, recommendation or to uh, just do specific ones. Um, more than happy to uh, to undertake either of those processes. Um, really, it was to attempt to uh, make that decision, uh, move it forward, and uh, then discuss around when uh, we'd actually like to pay it out. But once approved, then uh, it would go back into reconsideration if we want to hold anything back. So um, it's best to have that conversation now, understand uh, what you're comfortable with paying and not paying, and then uh, be able to have a motion that reflects that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, Councilor McConnell, follow up, and then I'll move to is Councilor Jansman ahead next. Lee, follow up. Uh, Honestly, um, I would I, honestly I would think the committee should meet again and have another look at this uh, and have a discussion on it before it's it's approved because I think uh, I think there's other considerations now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Jansman. Um. I agree with Councillor McConnell. I think it's a little premature considering what we know now that we didn't know then. And um, and although the Committee of Whole did approve this, the Council hasn't yet. So we do have wiggle room to at least delay um, the payment of these because I, we would look rather silly paying out, you know, for instance, minor soccer if they never get to play, that kind of thing. You know, I do have an exception to that though. Um, like the ones we have paid, the Food Bank and Connect Youth, because they have been um, active during this pandemic. I would also propose that we pay out the King's Kitchen because they too have been um, active. But but other than that, you know, the that volunteer tax program hasn't been able to happen. The the zombie walk might not happen. You know who knows type of thing. So I think it's a little premature to approve this. And, and instead I would uh, agree with Council McConnell to perhaps a committee meet again and have another uh, look at this, you know, do July 31st when we know a lot more then. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Jansman. Uh, anyone else wanna weigh in? Councillor Burton. Thank you. Um, I'm definitely in favor of deferring this um, because we don't know. It's the unknown right right now. So um, if these organizations cannot um, open up their facilities and open up their open up their uh, recreational activities, then um, we should definitely look at alternatives down the road. Um, it's the unknown, right? So I would say defer this until uh, at least a couple weeks until, until things settle down or may not settle down. Thank you very much. Uh, other comments? So not not hearing a uh, tremendous amount of support for going uh, going through as is. It's fair to say that. Is there a number that haven't weighed in on this? Okay, so any I, we've heard from a few councillors. Uh, who have we not? Councillors Ostrander and Young. Uh, Councillor Ostrander, any comment here on, on deferral on how to move forward? Well, I... I'm listening very closely, but uh, uh, we're kind of in a in a mixed uh, mixed variety here. We, in good faith, back in I guess it was March or so, we uh, approved these groups. Uh, most of them are yearly, annual amounts, and uh, I suppose, it, with the exception of a few that uh, come up this summer, that we uh, we could probably take a second look at it. So. It's a pretty tough choice to make, but if uh, if putting it over a couple of weeks is going to make that 
decision easier. I suppose we could live with that for now, uh, but I think uh, by the time we get into June here, we best know uh, where we're taking this for this year. Thanks. Thank you very much, Councilor Young. Um, I don't mind having another meeting about it, but um, I would be inclined to pay them something now. Um, you pointed out both figure skating and um, and minor hockey have uh, had their expenses for part of it. Maybe they should get half of their request now and uh, we'll look at the rest later. But uh, whatever you choose, if you want to have another meeting on it, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Oh, and Councillor Shankar, have you spoken on this one yet? Sorry. No, um, I, I'm fine with waiting two weeks. I mean, you, you know, if, if, uh, if our boat ramp is going to be open on Friday and maybe in two weeks from now we have the marina open, uh, it might be good signs going forward that life might return to normal. So, you know, two weeks, two weeks nowadays seems like two months, you know, the way, the way COVID's been going. So a lot can happen in two weeks and if we want to wait till then, that's fine. Is this a, uh, Ali mentioned there was a subcommittee that did this um, chart already? Yeah, and brought it back to council. I think we approved it at committee just before everything hit in March, and then we never fully ratified this at council, but we did approve it at the committee level. It just didn't get, uh, it didn't rise to council. Okay. Council McConnell, do you have a comment? Uh, I think the, the um, opinion uh, to pay both the figure skating and hockey for whatever expenses that they have had to date. I mean, we give them each the year and if it's half of their season, if you want to look at it, spring and fall as, as two halves of the season, I think that would be a very reasonable thing to do. But I think the other half of uh, the thing, which would be for the fall season, we should just hang on till we see if there's actually a fall season. The uh, soccer, their whole season is in the summer, so I think we should wait to see whether they have a season or not. Teresa's a comment about the uh, the kitchen, uh, by all means, um, I think that should go ahead. But I think this is something that should come back to council with a suggestion from the committee, and I, I don't think it would be a very long video meeting that uh, would would be able to to rectify. I I was just going to suggest it's not that long a list. We can run it. I think we could probably run it down pretty quickly right now and come up with a motion. Well, what we're sure. doing here. Yeah. Want, to, want to try it now quick. Councillor Burton, did you have a comment? I do actually. I just wanted to comment on uh, Council McConnell. Uh, Council McConnell's soccer season is actually May until August. Um, but unfortunately, we can't um, commit to running our soccer season just yet. Um, because of what is going on, but we are hoping maybe um, a couple months of soccer. So, you know, end of June, early July, hopefully the kids will be able to um, play. But like I said, it, it, it's still the unknown. So um, they're still trying, we're still trying to plan for the soccer season, but um, we're at a standstill. Thank you for that, uh, Councilor Burton. Uh, Kimberly, did you have a comment? Yes, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would suggest moving forward that we withdraw the motion that Councilor Young and Councilor Burton put on the table before going through the list. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna mention that. I was just gonna get a reminder of who. So who, who's the mover and seconder again? Councilor, Councilor Young and Councilor Burton. Councilor Burton, are you okay with withdrawing that? Then we'll just run through the list quickly and look at, a, at, a, at another motion? Yes. Seeing some nods, okay. So if we want to just, I'll just run through it quickly. So food for all food banks been paid and I'm seeing no opposition to that. So that's, it. that's an okay. South Granville minor hockey. We've been told obviously that half their season is, is, is done. Uh, so we haven't paid that out yet. So what, what would we say to just paying half of that for now and deferring the other half? Seems fair. I would say. Okay with that. Uh, so South Granville minor hockey would go to uh, 2,400 for now, and then we'd review it at a later date, depending on how their season progresses. King's Kitchen, 2,500, everyone good with that. They're obviously still doing uh, the meals program now. Minor hockey would be, or sorry, minor soccer would be on hold for the next little bit. 
Hopefully they'll get some clarity on that from the province and will be able to operate a season. So we would bring that back uh, with, with a, a further meeting. Uh, figure skating club, half the season is in. So we'd cut that in half as well. Same logic as minor hockey. Uh, Girls Incorporated is in kind only. I'm, uh, is that correct, Matthew? So that's not a... Yeah, that was the rank. Sorry, there's two portions of it. One is $1,000 to uh, offset um, fees for... Uh, those in need and then the second uh, was uh, for uh, the rink or two portions. Okay so Girls Incorporated is, is one up for discussion then is that one we want to defer or one we want to pay out? I was sorry I would yep, suggest please. deferring it. Me too. Okay uh, hearing uh, uh, everyone okay with that we defer Girls Inc for now. Councilor Young. Brett, Brett are they not running something or trying to run something during this time? I'm, I'm not aware of, uh, of it. I don't know if they've been in communication with staff. Uh, Leanne, do you have your hand up? Do you even know what they're, what they're doing now? Mm -hmm. they're, do, they're just doing a virtual um, online, so right now. So you're telling me it's not expensive what they're doing, right? They're not spending money? That's correct, for my okay. knowledge. Okay, so we could put that one in with, uh, with soccer then for now as something we can get an update on in the weeks to come. Uh, Connect Youth has already been been, been paid out uh, because they were offering the uh, the added uh, the added programs. They got some funding as well from uh, from the province, uh, so they're they're doing okay now. Volunteer Center of St. Lawrence Rideau that was a volunteer income tax program. Got to assume none of that actually took place, or if, if so, very very little of it. Uh, so we'd hold on that one for now, I would guess. Is everyone okay with that? Uh, Fort Town Night Runs in kind only right now. Grenville Historical Society. Uh, I'm assuming that was wasn't anything that was time sensitive or urgent that I'm aware that I'm aware of. So we could hold that one as well for now. Everyone seeing everyone in agreement with that. Zombie Walk is uh, going to be reviewed. Second intake uh, potential uh, request for funding. Shakespeare's uh, a, a questionable one that we're probably going to want to talk about for a moment. When uh, Matthew and I had a quick meeting uh, on Zoom with their staff on Friday, just to get kind of an update in their plans, Matt already did go over it. Uh, they would like to see the money uh, still, you know, obviously uh, uh, they, they would like to continue with the 18. They're very grateful for all the support, but they want to be able to continue with the staffing they have with uh, with Ingrid coming on board as, uh, as the new uh, uh, manager and uh, uh, Richard, of course, as well as uh, the festival director, uh, simply because they're trying to keep everything going so they don't have to basically shut the festival down and then restart again in the fall. And that's a possibility uh, if, if there, there are any uh, funding uh, interruptions there simply because, uh, I mean, they, they, don't, they don't know if they're gonna be able to restart again in the fall. They'd have to rehire staff and sort of uh, reboot the festival. So that was a concern. Uh, Richard did say uh, they'd be happy to defer part of it uh, and even go with two installments so we could do one now and one later or whatever council's looking at, but they would like to, to see the 18 uh, at, at, at some point this year. And they are uh, working with us. Uh, Richard has actually agreed to be part of that uh, working group on economic recovery, representing some of the tourism field. Uh, they're working uh, with us in a couple other areas as, as well with regards to uh, uh, just tourism planning, maybe a little bit of work on the, on the second floor as we prepare that uh, for construction in terms of lighting and however we, we, we finalize that. And also, as Matthew mentioned, there's the possibility of uh, one man shows and uh, different things as we move forward. And hopefully some of those things are allowed this summer. But that's probably one of the more one of the more questionable ones on here, just in terms of discussion. Uh, I will say I support it personally because I think it's going to be difficult to pull the money away and expect them to start up again in the fall. But again, uh, I'll leave it open for discussion there. So they they would like they would like to continue with the eighteen thousand, but they're willing to defer part of it. Councilor Burton. Thank you. Um, I think all the organizations at this point in time are struggling. I mean, who's to say that? Um, you know, Girls Inc. is not as in, as important as Shakespeare and Prescott Soccer for 500 kids is not, you know, as important as Shakespeare. Um, I think that is a bigger discussion for definitely those those three organizations. Um, how do you defer one and not the other? That would be the question. 
So I, I mean, if you're going to pay out the 18,000 to uh, Shakespeare, I would say, let's just pay out soccer and girls incorporated, make it all even and fair. Because we're talking about children, right? We're talking about children in a different organization. So, I mean, these kids are not in school and they're not seeing their friends and, uh, you know, it's been really tough on them. So why not give them the, the opportunity and the organizations an opportunity to get their, um, get their recreational activities in check? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that. My, my only comment would be with minor soccer, as far as I know, there are no staff involved and it, it, it's not uh, something that if, if, if soccer doesn't happen this year, it will happen again next year. If Shakespeare does go down for this year and they don't have money to pay staff and continue at least some operations, I think it is a real question then if the organization comes back or not. Uh, because obviously we did have those concerns when we granted them the extra 30,000. Uh, last fall. There obviously are some cash concerns there. This, uh, I mean, COVID hit, hit a, a terrible time for everyone, but we are talking about the potential loss of the festival in perpetuity. The other organizations, I'm not hearing any evidence that if we don't pay minor soccer $5,000, now they'll fold forever. And I would, it's the same thing with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Girls Inc. So I, I think there is a bit of a difference there with, with the two organizations. Mm -hmm. Do you have a response, Councillor Burton? Actually, I do. Um, so Prescott Soccer and Girls Inc. actually are nonprofit organizations. So they they count on sponsorships. And if our businesses in our area are not able to sponsor, then there will not be programs for these children. Plain and simple. And I can see like. <laughs> Every year, uh, sponsorship letters from Prescott Soccer are sent out in February, and it's a minimum of $250 for a business to sponsor a team. And if we don't have that, those businesses, as some of them have already closed, then there will not be soccer. Well, I, 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 I'm not going to belabor the point. I just know we've been... I, I have, we've received direct information from Shakespeare on this. We don't have anything from minor soccer uh, attesting to those, uh, unless you're speaking for the organization now. And I would say if you're speaking as an advocate for the organization, uh, you, you might want to declare that interest. No, actually, I'm not part of the organization anymore. Um, okay. Yeah, I haven't been in the last couple of years, but uh, been involved in Prescott Soccer and Girls Incorporated for many years as a volunteer. I am I'm advocating for those those non profitable organizations. Thank you very much. Councillor Jansman, do you have a comment? Oh, I think I was after Councillor Shankar. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see Councillor Shankar's yeah. hand. Uh, Councillor Shankar and then uh, Councillor Jansman, please. Uh, through you, Mayor, I just wanted to ask uh, Matt, it, it says for the Santa Ana Shakespeare, it's an in kind request. So I always thought that meant, you know, us um, doing the work. It, it's both. Like, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's both. I'm figuring that out now. I, I, is that the same as Girls Inc? It's an in-kind request plus the thousand, correct, Matt? That's correct. So what we were uh, trying to make the point is that they're above, over and above the monetary value. There is some in-kind requests. Um, oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Grant. It's that one caught me earlier too. I wasn't sure what the, and I figured it out because of the way it was. Okay. I thought that was a dollar figure to our our work that we provide for them, but that's separate a, a separate issue. So I'm okay. Thank you, Councillor Jansman. Um, I'm just wondering if I could propose. I think it would be as much as we all appreciate Saint Lawrence Shakespeare. Um, I think deferring this might might be the answer too. And in the meantime, um, propose that Dana uh, work with them more like one-on-one -on -one to have them take advantage of all of the federal funding that, that has been out there. EI has been waived for two weeks, you know, benefit. Um, perhaps they haven't looked at everything that could help them out as a temporary layoff. And then that will lessen the risk of losing those staff people 
and yet it won't be on the on the backs of us of our taxpayers. Sure, if everyone's okay with that, we can defer that along with the other two items. Defer the whole 18, Councillor McConnell. Uh, no, I think we're doing well. I, I, as you're going down the list, I've been in total agreement with, with everything that we've decided on so far. As far as minor soccer goes, as a member of the committee that decided on these, nothing would make me happier than if we could give them their money and they could go ahead. And I certainly hope that that is what will happen, but we don't know. And since they're the only one of the sports groups uh, that haven't actually had part of their season yet, it only makes sense to hold on to the money until we find out what's doing there. But um, aside from minor soccer, what I wanted to say was uh, about Shakespeare. We devote money to Shakespeare each year here because it is an economic and tourist boon for the town. It pulls in people from Ottawa, from Montreal, from Toronto, from across the river to see the shows and they drink at our bars, they have a dinner at our restaurants, it provides economic activity here. Um, what they're proposing, as I understand it, is hopefully to still put on the community show, which is going to entertain the community one person shows, which uh, may again um, entertain the community, but I don't see the wholesale of uh, pulling in of the people from Ottawa, Toronto, Montreal, across the river. And given this co-virus uh, business, I'm not so sure we want to be pulling those people in for the next little while. Um, I, I've supported Shakespeare the entire time I've been on council and, and I continue to do so. But I think that's one that we should uh, defer in particular. I would like to see some information from Shakespeare as to how they can trim their costs, cut their costs, minimize the costs, all this, open. especially if they're going to have to stretch oh. through until next spring. Uh, I would like to see whether uh, if we gave them the full $18,000, uh, without any income from shows uh, over the summer, whether they're going to be coming back to us in December looking for another 30000 to get them through the winter. I'd also like to know, and, and I can remember it being announced at the uh, gala in February that we went to, that they received the provincial grant of, I think it was $12,000. Um, I'm assuming that was conditional on them having a season and they're not going to have a season so is that going to be pulled back uh, apparently just to answer that one that that was raised on friday and richard did tell us that that money has been confirmed for this year i'm remembering that right matt that's correct so the provincial funding i believe they, is still there they will have a Pretty it will wrong. be paid whether they have a season or not okay well i again i i i would like to to see a little more from Shakespeare before we approve that money. But I will say this, in looking at Brockville and what they're facing, I mean, they have the Aquatarium and they put an awful lot of money into that every year. And if they've got nobody coming through, through the Aquatarium, they're gonna be suffering some huge losses there uh, that they're gonna be putting out. And our $18,000 is peanuts in, uh, in comparison. And I do agree with uh, what you said, that um, if they disappear for several months, there's no guarantee that they will appear again. Volunteers have a tendency to disappear. Hello. Capable people. Um, That's it. Can you believe that? <laughs> believe that? Capable people sometimes just can't be hired. Uh, if the whole festival falls this year, there's no guarantee we'll ever get it back. And that would be an awful shame. So. Uh, I, I think as much as possible, we should support Shakespeare, but I would like to see a little more coming from them as far as how they're projecting their costs through the fall and the winter with no money coming in. Um, I, I think we should be doing due diligence to our taxpayers, and, and I think that's what this requires. But as far as everything else that we've approved to pay out, I think so far we're on the right track. Shakespeare, I think we should continue down on the line. Thank you, Mayor Todd. 
Thank you very much. And we did mention this when we had the discussion on Friday that maybe uh, Shakespeare would have to present back to council again with some of their plans and proposals uh, if, if there were questions. And we kind of figured there would be extra on this one. So uh, that that is one. So we can defer that and ask them to come back. Councilor Young, you had a comment? Well, I was just going to say, um, if I understood you correctly, they they suggested to you that they could live with a portion of their grant now. Is that yeah. what you said? I then believe I, uh, Richard suggested we could cut it in half. Well, so then, one, half, one half now and one half later. Sure, I think we should take advantage of that offer. And uh, if they if they've realized that they can live with that, um, let's do it that way. So that would be approving nine thousand now and deferring the other nine. Correct. Based I, I, on what they need. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm just I'm hearing the majority seem to want to defer it to hear them back defer the whole amount for now and bring them back. So what's the general consensus on that defer it all or defer half, I guess, of the two options. Let's go around the table and just just put this one to bed. Councilor Burton, uh, defer half or defer all for now? Defer all. Thank you. Councilor Jansman? Especially since they have their provincial money for cash flow, I, th I would want to defer it all. Okay, Councillor McConnell. I would de defer it all and ask to hear from them as soon as possible, and and really emphasize that. Sure, Councillor Ostrander. I'd say uh, raise suggestion of deferring half, half now and half then. Okay, uh, Councillor Shankar. Defer it all. Okay, so that's where we're at with it then. So we'll defer it all for now on that one. Uh, so we'll move on. Fire Department Santa Claus Parade. Let's hope there's a Santa Claus parade, but that's one we can defer and discuss in the second half. Uh, Spirit of Giving, same thing. I, I you know, really hope we were able to award all that money and the same with uh, Connect Youth and Soccer, but right now those are two more we can hold if everyone's okay. So I think we've, we've got a pretty good idea of direction here. Uh, Kimberly, were you able to kind of distill all that into a motion that makes yeah. sense? Through you, um, I did try to capture it all. So the potential motion could read that council approve uh, the payments of the following community grant payments, $2,400 for South Grenville Minor Hockey, $2,500 for King's Kitchen, and $3,400 for the Prescott Figure Skating Club, and that the following uh, community grant payments be deferred uh, for Prescott Minor Soccer, Girls Incorporated, the Volunteer Center of St. Lawrence Rideau, the Grenville Historical so Society, the Fire Debar Department Parade, Spirit of Giving, and the St. Lawrence Shakespeare Festival. Did we also want to add that the um, direction to ask the festival to come back? Yes, please. Possible. Okay, and that, that be directed to request that the St. Lawrence Shakespeare so Festival um, be invited to the next council meeting? Sure. Yeah, let's let's try and get them in as soon as possible. And uh, if that's not uh, if that's too quick for them, we can defer it. But let's try to get them back for a uh, two as weeks as possible. or two weeks in a day with the 19th, the day after uh, Victoria Day. Yes. OK, so everyone's heard that uh, that motion. Uh, would anyone uh, care to uh, make that, please? Moved by Councillor McConnell, second by Councillor Jansman. Any Excellent. further discussion? Actually, that was, a, that was a discussion <laughs> wiggle there. Okay, just uh, before uh, we get on the table, just gonna get, uh, Councilor Jansman, then you okay to move that? Do I have a seconder? Councilor Burton? Okay, count, Okay. open for discussion, last comments. Councilor McConnell, please. Uh, just in regards to the historical side of society, if memory serves me correctly, uh, they were renting the store right next to the journal on King Street and absorbing the old library, I think, of the Prescott Journal. I think the grant that we gave them or we're going to give them had something to do with that. So perhaps um, we could contact them and see exactly what this $500 was for, uh, because that may be something that, well, it's volunteers, so odds are they're not going ahead with that at this particular time because of uh, social distancing, but it's something that certainly will go ahead, I presume. Uh, but um, maybe Matthew can, can look into that for us. I, I was talking to Fraser about it the other day, and I, 
I forget what he said, to be honest with you. <laughs> no comment, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay so when we when we send the notification out to all the deferrals uh if we could just obviously include a little a little note there any if they have any added feedback please contact us uh right away if there's any other information that we need to uh we need to consider so they they all have the chance to come back and uh and ask for the uh ask you know for further consideration that'll that'll cover uh Lee, lee's comments i think so Everyone okay with with that? Any further comments on uh, on the direction of the motion? Uh, seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thanks, everyone. All right. So uh, moving along to uh, six point three, uh, we do have staff report twenty eight dash twenty twenty. Uh, sorry, uh, 6.3, 29-2020, and the 2020, a lot of 2020s here, capital and operational projects. This is for information, but I'm going to guess this may result in some motions as well, or at least some very extensive discussion. Mr. Armstrong, you want to take us into this, please? Certainly. So following the last meeting, uh, Council asked that uh, we have a discussion around capital and operational projects. So the ones that you see in front of you this evening, uh, I'm just going to walk through each of them and then... Uh, uh, we can have a more fulsome discussion. So projects that have already have pending grant applications, there's the recreation complex uh, that was submitted as part of the community culture and recreation intake for investing in Canada. Uh, that was submitted in November of 2019. The water tower has also been submitted under the green infrastructure intake for investing in Canada infrastructure program in January, 2020. Uh, there's three or four projects in particular that uh, were approved in, or approved in 2019, and uh, my recommendations are as follows for completion in 2020. So phase two of the second floor, which uh, if you'll um, remember is uh, the remainder of the front, as well as the uh, uh, room that's on the uh, far west end of the building, uh, similar to the size of uh, the Ruth Evanson room on the east side that uh, work would be completed as time allows. We've mostly been using our internal resources to do that, uh, but have had to take a pause uh, given the physical distancing uh, couldn't be achieved in the next couple of uh, jobs that need to be done. And so estimated cost of $60,000. I've also put in here, if uh, funding becomes available as part of a stimulus package, that we would uh, be able to uh, perhaps uh, promote these projects uh, as being uh, ready to move forward. Phase three, second floor town hall, uh, that's the uh, large room in the back of the building uh, to the north. And so my suggestion would be completion in 2021. Um, again, about 175,000 to complete that uh, area of the building, which includes bathrooms, uh, kitchenette, uh, servery, as well as uh, the large open space. And so um, that's my recommendation. Uh, for two reasons, one, to confer, conserve cash, and secondly, uh, just to, to now that we're working into the uh, summer season, it's uh, our ability to work on those types of projects uh, wanes as uh, we have a lot more pickup in uh, parks and uh, recreation to, uh, to attend to. Splash pad, uh, just the in-ground infrastructure and the building uh, remain to be completed cost of approximately $80,000. Uh, we've already received a grant and uh, which was for the uh, equipment itself. And so uh, not likely to uh, be promoted for additional funding. Um, we're pretty sure that, uh, that based on the announcement on Friday that now pretty much all municipal projects can move forward. And uh, now it's a matter of being able to make sure that we can uh, maintain the physical distancing and guidelines uh, that are required. Final project is the swing set uh, replacement at Faders Park. Uh, it was purchased last year, really now it's down to installation and uh, which is a minimal cost, uh, which can be completed this year. So a total of 317,000. Uh, my suggestion would be to move forward with all of them uh, this year with the exception of perhaps uh, phase three of the uh, second floor. And that would be, we could reconsider that as uh, time moves on but certainly it um, would be a, a way to conserve cash uh, for this year, which we'll certainly have a fulsome discussion in our next report on cash flow. So 2019 operational type projects. So the official plan review is ongoing. Our next stage is to do uh, the uh, community engagement. And so um, it's an 
obviously on pause while we have physical distancing, but is our next step. Uh, the business um, organization login portal as part of the project for last year um, that we could do late in 2020 or 2021, it's about $5,500. If there's funding for community commercial engagement, then certainly that's a project we could promote. General signage for the ends of King Street as well as the north end of Edward. Uh, this is certainly something that uh, there's so many possibilities out there to, to move this project forward that uh, frankly, we were a little surprised by um, the cost involved as well as uh, the number of options. And so uh, we're suggesting spending the rest of this year coming up with possible solutions. Uh, and again, either uh, install in the fall of 2020 or defer until 2021. And certainly it's uh, community engagement and information sharing if there was any uh, funding that became available. The water supply line to the pool, this has been on the list for several years. It's, uh, it's a good time to do it with a linkage with the splash pad with the infrastructure being put in. And so uh, we're suggesting doing that in 2020. And then upgrades to the pool building, uh, finishing those in 2020 as well as staff time allows. And uh, we spoke about that uh, today internally and certainly something that we'd want to uh, get done in the next four to six weeks. Uh, town signage and wayfinding that actually has um, is an outcome more of the official plan. And so we would suggest moving off to 2021. But if there is tourism support uh, type funding, then we would absolutely uh, go after that for that type of uh, uh, project. The Waterfront Prescott sign, similar to the Toronto sign. Um, here again, we're, we're struggling a little bit with what the designs possibly could be and the plethora of options out there. And so what we're suggesting is we put an RFP, a request for proposal out in 2020 and either have it completed in the fall of 2020 or the spring of 2021. Uh, and again, tourism attractions. So if there's money out there for that, then we move forward. Veterans banners, uh, partnering with the Legion, uh, that uh, could be done in 2020 or 2021. There's no real um, expected cost uh, because it's more adorned uh, by the family uh, wishing to commemorate their uh, loved one and uh, as a veteran. And so, uh, but certainly something that we continue, continue moving forward on. So of the 143,000, the operational projects, um, we could complete approximately $78,000 worth this year. 50,500 could be completed in 2020 or 2021 and $15,000 moved uh, to 2021 uh, as a deferral for a project. And that's more due to the fact that the official plan has to be completed uh, more than anything else. So going now, moving and shifting the gears to the suggestions or capital projects uh, that uh, Council has reviewed uh, a few times and uh, were about to approve in uh, March, but uh, obviously uh, circumstance alter cases. So the break wall at the water treatment plant doing the engineering in 2020 uh, and then uh, implement the solution in 2020 or in the beginning of 2021. So that's 250,000, if climate change resiliency funding became available, then absolutely we would go after that. Upgrades to the stone area of the break wall along the rest of the, uh, the front uh, waterfront, uh, that being done in 2020. And uh, again, if the funding became available, then we would quickly go after it. Reconstruction of Dibble and, and or East Street. Um, the engineering work would be completed in 2020, 2021 uh, for the work uh, due, due to the timing that we're currently at, uh, going out to tender at this point would mean that work wouldn't start until well into the summer. And uh, that would certainly be a uh, uh, concern. Also at the same time, um, it, it's the largest project we have out there, $1.2 million or more. And so, uh, but if funding became available, we would absolutely go after it. Explore the purchase of water front land east of boundary. Continue to work on this in 2020 and 2021. There is no associated cost. Fire department replacement gear. This is for the bunker gear and SC SCBA. We would uh, continue that uh, due to health and life safety implications in 2020. The dog park. I don't think we've decided on a location of the dog park. And so I think exploring that in the course of 2020 and implementation in 2021 uh, is certainly something that uh, that we should consider. But if there is rec and culture, then uh, this is a project that we could move forward with um, from a, a funding uh, application standpoint. Park play structures, uh, doing the evaluation this year and addressing the deficiencies only, uh, as opposed to adding any new improvements. Accessibility sidewalks at King and Walker, 
Edward Street and uh, Water and Edward and Irvine. Uh, we talked about that today. If there's accessibility funding that becomes available, absolutely putting these uh, forward, but actually having them completed in 2020. Uh, completing the LED street lighting, we mentioned uh, that earlier when we were talking about the COVID-19 report uh, completion this year, as well as the issuing of the debt for the multi-year projects uh, that doesn't have, therefore it wouldn't have a cash flow per uh, uh, issue with it. And there, and if energy efficiency was a funding stimulus uh, program, then we would go after that as well. However, we believe that uh, the original um, application that we had for the uh, LED street light conversion that was from a few years ago is still active and we might be able to access a little bit of funding under that. Sidewalk plow and attachments, uh, putting out the RFP and purchasing it in 2020. Again, this was going to be funded through debt, and so there would be no cash flow implications. The backpack sander uh, for the sidewalk plow, again, uh, should be part and parcel of the uh, new sidewalk plow, so that, that way we can uh, move forward with that. The placement of the 20-year-old uh, front-end mower uh, or the large mower attachments, it, it's, uh, they're used on a daily basis throughout the entire uh, growing season. Uh, to just try and keep up with the, the parts. And so, again, it would be suggested to continue with it for 2020. Uh, the Marina Outdoor Network has been completed. The infrastructure uh, dock improvements, uh, we're working with Kehoe to uh, address what those uh, are and uh, be able to move those forward. And then the front end loader rejuvenation, uh, it becomes a bit of a health and safety uh, issue uh, just to replace fenders, uh, make it safe again uh, in terms of that. Uh, we still feel that that's a viable uh, option uh, to be able to uh, extend the life of that piece of equipment. And so all told, um, the capital projects for 2020 were $2,034,500. What we're suggesting is we could move forward with $234,500. Uh, uh, we could move forward with uh, in 2020 or 2021 with 250,000, deferring 1.225 million uh, to next year. The bulk of that being uh, either uh, Dibble or East Street, and then uh, $325,000 in uh, no impact, which is the street light uh, LED, as well as the um, sidewalk plow, and both are being funded by debt. So the total $2 million, uh, that's how it would split down, and uh, we would continue working from that perspective. Finally, we have the suggested uh, operational projects for 2020 and provincial site certification that's continuing to go through uh, that. If we're, we were successful in that, doing that, then uh, there are implications of uh, a cost sharing that we would have to uh, adorn uh, in some of the studies that need to be done. Preservation of town records, um, continuing at that this year, obviously very uh, pilot project we discussed at our last council meeting as uh, deferring it off until 2021. Exploration of the regional transportation system. I did want to bring council up to date that the East Ontario Leadership Council is undertaking a region-wide region transit study. And so uh, we would continue uh, participating in that as well as supporting, but um, at this time, uh, no particular costs in, in uh, implementing for this year. Install solar lights along the Heritage Trail, um, exploring the options in 2020 installation in 2021, uh, purely to, uh, to save some costs. Mural at the beach, obviously, uh, we were going to have that done as the second semester as the uh, high school arts program. Uh, that hasn't been able to occur, so moving it off to 2021. Lock and key replacement continue with it for uh, 2020. A barrier system at the yard for yard management uh, continuing with it for 2020. And then uh, finally, the CIP support and the Brothel General Hospital project support um, continuing for 2020. So all told out of 192,000, 64,000 will be spent uh, this year. Uh, at impact in 2020 or 2021 is 75,000, which is a CIP program um, being able to, and it's really dependent on the applications that we receive. And obviously we haven't received much uh, in the way this year. And finally, uh, $53,000 moving to 2021. And, uh, and the impact there. So a total of shy of 2.7 million. Uh, that's how we uh, could possibly achieve uh, the vast majority of the projects while still being able to conserve cash and, but also uh, highlight some of the projects that would make sense to promote forward if funding becomes available. Thank you. 
Uh, wow, that was uh, pretty wide ranging. I'm not even sure where we can start that discussion. There's so much there, but we'll just, uh, how about we go around the table on this one because this, uh, this there's, there's a lot here and I'm not sure we're gonna be able to come up with a final full uh, directed list tonight. I think get some feedback here and it will bring it back uh, to staff for a further look and maybe try to winnow some of this down based on the feedback this evening, maybe bring this back uh, uh, next <coughs> meeting and try to finalize exactly what uh, what we're asking of staff uh, here because there there is a lot here tonight. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll start going around the table. Let's, uh, let's try that uh, because there's so much uh, to take in. So I'll start, we'll just go alphabetically around the table and start with Councilor Burton. Thank you. Um, definitely a, a very good detailed uh, report. Uh, Matthew, I really appreciate that. And um, we do still have a lot going on for us during this time, which is which is nice to see. Um, I would like to comment on the dog park. Um, just one of the items. Um, it was, we talked about earlier about um, having a problem with um, people not leashing their dogs. Um, people have been using the old soccer uh, field at Criska, and uh, because they're not able to do that, they're they're able to let their dogs off leash in a field, um, and that field probably is behind Town Barn or uh, around the Criska ball field area. Um, Personally, I don't see a problem in doing that. I think we should have some leniency uh, for those people that are letting their dogs off leash in just in that area. Definitely on leash and sidewalks and in public area areas is definitely a must. Um, the other items that you have on your list here, Matthew, um, unless anybody else wants to talk about the dog part, is that what you want to do, Mayor Todd? Or Apologies, I had my mute on. Uh, yeah, if we could just go oh. around, just try to itemize your, your concerns now, and we'll just go around the table, and then we'll see which ones uh, warrant further discussion, depending on uh, how many people bring up specific items. <clears throat> so please continue. Okay. Yeah, um, right Okay. Um, the other items on the list is um, definitely, you know, starting on the, the splash pad is, um, is definitely... Good. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing there, Matthew, is um, pouring the cement for the building and and um, actually constructing the building. Correct. Uh, and putting in the in ground infrastructure, so the water, the sewer, and the storm. Oh, uh, correct. The, the two things that uh, still need to be done, and mm -hmm. but uh, we're pretty sure that we can move forward on those uh, relatively quickly. Okay. All right. Um, Upgrading the pool, we've already started that pro that project, correct? That's correct, it was approved in 2019 and mm -hmm. uh, to be finished this year. Mm -hmm. It's a pool building. Yes. Yes, it's just putting siding on the pool building. And so I think that's it for me, uh, Mayor Todd, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councilor Burton. Uh, Matthew, just to follow up one item, you did mention fairly quickly with splash pad. What does fairly quickly mean? Because we've obviously lost two months of construction time here with everything shut down. If we go back full bore tomorrow, uh, how long to, before we're, we're basically finished down there? Are we two months, 30 days, three months? Um, I guess we would have about uh, at least four weeks, uh, quite possibly six more weeks of construction. That being said, um, we're not sure how uh, you would maintain physical distancing in that type of environment. So um, from a usage standpoint, so it, it um, another four to six weeks, I don't think is going to particularly change uh, when we would uh, have a opening. Yeah, I guess that's, that's something we should probably be uh, conditioning some members of the public for that, because I know there are, are, are a certain number that think we, should be rushing this now and getting it open as soon as possible, and trying to let people know. I, I, I think 2020 is gonna be a pretty tough year for the splash pad in town in terms of operations, but just 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 so people are aware of that, that uh, that could definitely be an issue. But construction, you're talking 
fairly short order then if we can get up and running in the not too distant future. We believe we can start uh, some of the construction next week and then uh, that four to six week time frame. Great, thank, thank you very much. Uh, so moving along to uh, Councillor Jansman, please. Um, just one more question, if I could, about the splash pad. So to, to here it says completion um, in 2020, like the complete splash pad as well as the, the building? That's correct. So in my notations here, if uh, I think we can complete it in 2020, then that's I've noted. And then I've either split it between uh, late 20 or early 2021, or just made the notation of uh, completion in 21. So uh, with the splash pad in particular, it would be absolutely complete in the course of 2020. Okay, thank you. And um, okay, um, the, under the, that's the only question I have under the 2019 capital projects, 2019 operational projects. Um, if there's wiggle room, as you mentioned about the digital signage to hold off on that um, with it being such a, a big question mark on amount, um, as well as the town signage and wayfinding on the next page for another additional 15,000 waiting on the outcome of their official plan. I kind of see those things as, as the same item. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, uh, I, in terms of timing, makes perfect sense. If they were both to wait till 2021, maybe the official plan could provide some uh, guidance around uh, community digital signage. And so more than happy to uh, to defer that. Okay. And the 15,000, just the, the thing above that regarding the pool building exterior, um, the 15,000, because we're using existing staff, that's just the cost of materials that I'm assuming, right? That's correct. So uh, the staff is installing the uh, the outer. Um, there's still the eaves and some sill work. Uh, in particular, eaves trough might be done by an outside company, uh, just because it's specialized, so that you don't have any uh, joints. But uh, but the vast majority of that is materials. Yes. Okay, I thought maybe at the 2020 capital projects. Um, I don't have any questions on except a, a happy face on the accessible sidewalks uh, for um, the King and, and Walker House, Edward at Water and Edward at Irvin because that's been a long time coming. And I wondered, it's only, I know it's only 5,000 for the 2020 operational projects, 5,000 for the, the town records. Is that cost of software or something? No, that's actually a uh, cost of physical um, things. So uh, there's such things as acid-free folders uh, that need to be purchased. And it's to remove uh, those uh, chemicals and materials that actually degrade the paper. Uh, also uh, purchasing new shelving and uh, some uh, storage materials. So all of that uh, is to do with uh, purchasing the products and supplies that uh, are uh, going to help preserve those uh, particular documents for a much longer period of time. Okay, thank you. And um, I just wanted to use this as an opportunity that when, when it was listed, the, the painting at the beach, um, and unfortunately, we'll probably have to wait for 2021 since it's Christine Sloan's art class. I think that's going to participate, correct? And I just wanted to do a little um, yay to, to her uh, creative work at the old Young's uh, location with the Prescott Strong message. I think that was just awesome. And I agree that the 175,000 for the third phase of the second floor makes sense to hold off until as long as we possibly can into 2022 perhaps. And that's it for me, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor McConnell, please. I thought it was kind of worthy to note that Teresa was talking about the old Young's place and we've got the old Young on council. <laughs> anyway, uh, I misheard a while ago, you may have saw me chuckling here, but when Matthew was going through and he said mural at the beach, it came through to me as beer beach. And I thought, we're having beer on the beach. <laughs> it's only dawned on me it was the mural he was talking about. Anyway, that's what I was talking about. Uh, I'd like to comment, Matt, 
Matthew or compliment Matthew. He's done a good job on this, on putting it, on making it make sense. And and I think we all have a, a great deal of gratitude for that because it saved us going through largely and doing the same thing. Uh, there's a couple of things that I comment on though. We don't, we're very hopeful that the amount of taxes that we normally get in we're going to get in and we're going to get them in irregardless of when we actually say we want them, whether it's the end of September and the end of November, or whether it's the end of August and the end of December, whatever. We're hopeful that we're going to get them. But until those times actually come by, we don't really know. So uh, I think moderate spending is, is the best way to go for the balance of this year. And so anything that we can defer uh, to next year, it, it would be a good thing to, to do. And honestly, I think Matthew's done a pretty good job of, of, of doing that for us. I don't disagree really with anything that he has put in his, his report. Uh, the one thing I might comment on is the work going on in the town hall. Uh, well, it'd be nice to see that finished. I don't think anybody is going to be crying uh, without it. So if we could slack off on anything, uh, especially since we're doing it ourselves, I think that would be one place to slack off on. As far as the splash pad goes, the outside contracting work that re is required to be done, in other words, the trenching, sewers, uh, pouring of cement, I would get that done as absolutely quick as possible because the park really isn't being used right now. So it's not not going to interfere with anything. So we get that done, get it covered over, get some grass before everything really opens up and people are using it again. Now's a good time for that. Uh, he threw a couple of figures at us, one for the break wall at the water treatment plant, and then another figure for a rock along the rest of our waterfront. Um, I have to wonder where those two figures come from because I don't think 25,000 is going to come close to doing the amount of rock work that we need along the water. I walk there every day and, and I see that as being considerably more than that. And the uh, amount that he put down for the reconstruction of that break wall at the water treatment plant, I'd like a little better idea of what he had in mind because um, taking that out completely and replacing it, I don't see as a real necessity. It's, it's, it's a good cement base there. And I think if we could work with it, it should come up about two feet higher and it should extend farther. But other than that, um, I, I don't know what's involved. So I, I would like to see some more of a plan uh, coming forward for that, because that, that is a very important. It's our water treatment plant. Without water, or nothing. Um, Leanne mentioned uh, that we discussed um, the dogs off leash before and then flopped into the dog park. We actually didn't discuss dogs off leash before. It was referred to, but nobody talked about it. I would have talked about it, but I didn't realize that that's when we were going to do it. So I'm presuming that, that I can still throw in about that. Um, I've walked four dogs and I've had all four dogs that I've owned attacked by a dog's off leash and in each case on more than one occasion. So, uh, dogs off leash are, are a, a very sensitive point with me, but by the same time, I have also walked those dogs off leash, but on a very restricted, uh, location when there isn't many other dogs new uh, near or when there are dogs that they know but it's a touchy subject and uh, if you talk to the people who walk their dogs off leash they're they're very they're very concerned about this so while i can see us adding that to our bylaw i would not like to see our bylaw officer sitting down east of the marina and nailing everybody with a ticket who's walking their dog without a leash i would like to see it reserved to complaints so that if somebody is complaining about a particular dog in a particular instance that that dog can be uh, ticketed 
not everybody that's got their dogs out enjoying the day. Um, the dog park, uh, we have, well, we've got that area with the soccer field. A lot of people use that. A lot of people use the area behind the public works facility. But uh, given discussions that we have had uh, in the past few weeks, I think uh, as much as I would like to see here is the dog park, let's do it. Um, I think a little more discussion needs to go in there because we don't want to put it someplace and then wind up having to move it. Um, I can't think of anything else that I wanted to talk about in there. I'm sure something will crop up along the lines when somebody is saying something, but uh, I think that's all I have for now, Mayor Todd. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor McConnell. Uh, so moving on, uh, go to uh, Councillor Ostrander, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, very, uh, very well done list, very extensive, uh, Matthew. Um, of course, the, uh, the two heavy hitters laid off the group here with the recreation complex and the water tower. Um, obviously because of their cost and the amount of, uh, uh, shall we say publicity and effort they've uh, received in the last <coughs> year. Um, the, uh, work on the town hall. Uh, it's been on here before and it's a continuation of uh, what's been planned there. Uh, splash pad, uh, swing set, um, official plan review, signage, um, water supply line, upgrades to pool, building, exterior, town. Uh, splash pad, of course, is uh, mentioned here a couple of times. So we know that we're going to try to uh, get that tidied up uh, this year. Um, the break wall at the water treatment plant, um, upgrades to the stone uh, area of break wall, and uh, then a couple of biggies here, rec reconstruction of Dibble or East Street, or both, I guess you could say. <laughs> uh, both are in uh, pretty rough shape. Um, dog park, that's been on the cooker for at least three or four years or more. Uh, no mention here of the, uh, how terrace site that we talked about at one time. Anyway, um, park structures, the accessibility to uh, sidewalks at King, Walker House, Edward and Water, Edward and Irving. Um, the repair to the equipment is obvious. Uh, we either have to repair it or in some cases uh, replace it. Um, the marina, outdoor work, dock infrastructure, um, and other associated programs. The uh, CIP program, of course, has been a, been a big boon to us. It's helped a lot. Um, yeah. Also, back in the uh, leading off here in the background and analysis of this was a uh, study done on the uh, Edward Street Bridge and completed here in December. And it highlights work that needs to be done within the next two to three years. Um, good old infrastructure always uh, trumps other projects when it's needed, and particularly the uh, Edward Street Bridge, which is a, a main link into our uh, town and downtown. So um, that's uh, my overview of it. it it's not, uh, <laughs> I'm not picking out any uh, particular. Uh, uh, These favorites are here, but uh, right. the needy ones are obvious, and uh, they they stand out. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Councilor Ostrander. So uh, move along to uh, Councilor Shankar, please. Uh, thank you. So I know we've discussed all of these before, and I don't want to just uh, reread it all. I did have a question for Matt on page uh, thirty nine where we talk about exploring the purchase of waterfront land east of boundary. Um, I, I don't remember all of that. Could you just give us a little more insight into that, please? Certainly. So it is one of the items that was brought up uh, in the course of our strategic planning. And so was added to the project list. Uh, this would be explored with the federal government. Uh, Parks Canada currently owns it. Uh, and uh, it would be similar to the three and a half acres that we own towards the marina side. 
So uh, taking a look at it to see if they want to divest themselves of it. And if so, uh, would the town be interested and at what cost? So really that was the impetus for that particular project. But my suggestion is uh, you know, the federal government's pretty busy right now and, uh, and they're going to be for pretty much the remainder of this year. So we'll reach out to them, see how uh, that discussion goes. But um, probably the majority of that discussion would happen in 2020, 2021. Is there a plan for that land if we do get it? Uh, no, certainly it, um, we would have to do our environmental testing, things like that, to just to understand what shape it's in. But certainly uh, it's one of the few areas in town that is vacant on the waterfront and would provide some possibilities of economic development for the town of Prescott. Very good, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councilor Shanker. Councilor Young, if you're done with your phone calls for a moment, do you mind weighing in? I don't get that many phone calls in a month. They've all come in last sure, hour. Sure, sure. <laughs> anyway, um, I like Matthew's report. As he was going through it, I had uh, no serious issues with any of the subjects, uh, any of the projects. Um, I am I am satisfied that that's a, a logical approach to um, construction this year, uh, considering the uh, the situation. Um, I also wanted to tell you that I have had a phone call since our last uh, meeting when there was a story in the paper that we were not going to do any three in the last any infrastructure work, and um, people were concerned that we can't stop doing infrastructure work. And I, I explained it was just, we weren't going to do East Street, we were going to do other smaller projects and, and that satisfied them. So I think publishing a list of what we are going to do will, will uh, certainly make some people happy that we're moving forward. That's it. I did actually make that correction to Ron Zajac with the recorder and times because they made it very, uh, the story made it made it seem to make it very clear that we decided we're we're basically shutting down for the year, and that we made, we made no decisions on that. Of course, as we all know, so hopefully the story coming out of tonight will uh, will correct that that opinion. That's the, that's that's good, Ray, and thanks for thanks for getting that out there. Uh, so I guess uh, just a couple quick comments myself. The only uh, uh, the only one I did want to really mention is just the second floor of town hall. It's uh, it's, it's not exactly at the uh, on the front burner in a lot of ways, but I want I will remind everyone as well. I mean, this is starting to drag quite a ways now, too. We're a good solid year behind on that project since we originally approved it. We've got no running water really on the second floor, no washroom facilities, no, no anything. So it is something that uh, I, I hope that uh, we can get a, a fair bit done in 2020 as we go forward. It would seem to be it's it's a smaller uh, monetary uh, number with with the both projects even that phase three and i think phase three actually includes such things as the the new kitchenette the bathrooms and so on uh if, if, correct me if i'm wrong on that matt phase two doesn't include those sorts of yeah so so that that concerns me a little bit that we're going to kick the second the second floor town all the washrooms all the way back to 2021, and every time I hear one year, it can all, you know, and I, I've been around municipal government long enough that you talk one year, you pretty much what we want to add six months to another full 12 months onto that. So that is concerning to me on that one because we we agreed to go ahead with that building quite some time ago, and it'd be nice to just get that finalized. That's why I'm glad to see the the LED lighting looking like that's uh, that that's going ahead as well, and everything else looks good. But I, I just my own way a question now would be. Where are we to finalize the budget? Uh, we've got a lot of feedback here tonight and it doesn't sound like anyone has you know, major concerns about some of the slowdowns. I mean, we'd love to proceed with a, with a lot of these projects. It's disappointing that we're gonna lose this much time, but I mean, there's not really a lot we can do about it. Uh, COVID-19 really has uh, taken a lot of the control of this out of our hands right now. But uh, Mr. Armstrong, can you let us know about budget? Can we bring this back? Uh, home this this is a great list but it is pretty uh, pretty big and maybe a little unwieldy for a for a motion on its own so we could we bring this back with a recommendation and let's finalize uh, the budget uh, in the next little bit I mean that's one thing we haven't 
locked down yet. And obviously these are all major budget items. So can you give us a little feedback on that and uh, what our timing is to, to finalize the budgets? Certainly. So certainly we would be happy to bring this back uh, at the next meeting on May 19th uh, for consideration. We would remove the 2019 projects uh, for the 2020 uh, capital and then um, just be able to, to move forward with them. Um, if we have them all approved then, which I'm not hearing that any uh, would uh, be precluded from a list for approval, uh, but then we would, uh, as just part of the cash management, follow the suggestions that have been outlined here. Uh, and then as, uh, you know, as things progress and uh, perhaps we receive all the money that, uh, that we're expecting in terms of our property taxes, then certainly we can uh, start to focus on those other uh, mid-range projects as well uh, to bring them up uh, a little bit closer and a little bit sooner. But, uh, but certainly we would like to do that. Also the operational budget, um, I haven't heard any uh, uh, further changes being uh, recommended or suggested by uh, any members of council. So we'd happy, be happy to bring that back as well with the 0% increase, um, or if council wishes to have a further discussion on that, I'm more than happy to do so. And then at our last council meeting, uh, we decided to not increase water waste more water and wastewater rates <clears throat> in the course of 2020. So uh, I think that covers off uh, most of that budget, uh, and then we'll bring it back for approval on the total. So uh, we can bring back all three of these: uh, the operational, the capital, uh, and operational projects, as well as the water and wastewater budget for the February May 19th meeting, and then also have a discussion around timing. <coughs> Uh, that final payment for property taxes would be. Sure, if we could, if everyone's in agreement with that, let's try and close that off on, on the 19th. So we've got a good, uh, a good final list of, of uh, projects that are going forward, projects that are maybes and projects that are definitely pushed to 2021. And let's try to get all this uh, finalized in, in the budget. I think we, I mean, things could still change. Obviously everything's still in flux with uh, with COVID-19, as I think uh, Lee mentioned earlier, we don't know if we're gonna open up and then have to shut down again or, or what the situation's going to be, or maybe we are out of the, uh, out of the, uh, the deepest part of the woods, but I think we can, we can probably cement a lot of that now and finalize our budget and, uh, and move forward as of, as of the 19th. Matt, is there anything else there that we're waiting? Uh, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's all kind of a guessing game to a certain extent, but I think we've got enough firm knowledge that we can proceed. Am I, Correct in that assumption? Uh, that's my understanding is that um, based on everything that I've heard this evening as well as previously that I think I understand uh, what would be appropriate to bring forward. Okay. And uh, Councillor Young is our uh, finance uh, chair. Do you, do you like those dates and moving forward like yeah, that? I'm fine with that, Brett. Um, I was just wondering if Matthew has played around with uh, um, a number if those projects go through the way he has described them. Um, does it fit within a 0% increase or less? Yeah, so all of those projects are funded through reserves. And so really the intention here is try to uh, maintain a, a reasonable and not excessive draw on cash while still being able to uh, complete the most number of projects but none of those projects would have an impact on the uh, property rake uh, for this year. Okay, good, thank you. And uh, one thing I will note for anyone that may be watching at home or for media, uh, one thing we have done, and I think we're relatively unique in the area, I, I won't say completely unique, but I know some of our, our neighbors are definitely not in this boat is we're, we're struggling forward and we're, we're moving ahead with uh, contingency plans that don't include any staff layoffs. And I'll, I'll note that a number of municipalities in the area have laid off a relative, relatively significant number of staff. We're moving forward and trying to keep uh, keep our, our Prescott team whole and everybody working. And uh, I think that 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 stands us in, in in good stead. But I'm not not to say also that that completely removes that option as as we move forward as well because I think there there's there's going to be. Uh, the financial hit in this will become more and more clear as we get into the fall and we see just. Uh, what happens with the taxation. We also still have to await uh, what the province may be doing to assist municipalities. That's kind of the other shoe that hasn't dropped here yet. 
because we've got a lot of neighbors that are uh, are really hurting. I think uh, Lee brought up the Aquatarium in Brockville is something that's uh, a facility that's actually uh, hurt uh, hurt the city. But I know Kingston and uh, some of the other uh, urban areas in Eastern Ontario in conversations with our Eastern Ontario mayors, uh, caucus partners, uh, they're bleeding pretty badly right now with a lot of lost revenue. So we're going to have to see how, uh, how things move forward. And uh, this is a, an excellent report. It's great to have everything in, in front of us. But then we still have, of course, the cash flow that'll put things into more perspective. But there are some other items here that I, I think, you know, we're, we're going to have to still keep an eye on this. And whatever decisions we make now and on the 19th, we've got to be prepared to reopen them and look at, look, look at things in a, in a fresh light, depending on how significant uh, the potential uh, cash flow issues become as we move into the fall and uh, so on and so forth. But I think these are all good, uh, really good plans to, to kind of bridge the gap and move us forward in a progressive manner. And I know there are a lot of people that are, are frustrated out there that we're, uh, we're not leaping into things like East Street and Dibble East and some of the major uh, uh, capital, because quite frankly, that work is needed. But right now we're, we're just doing what we can. And I think we're, we're doing it in a way where uh, I, I think it's uh, something that we can all be, be proud of here to try to try to get through this as, as whole as possible and make sure that uh, we're looking after all the citizens and our own and our staff as well. So uh, that's really kind of an apropos and nothing rem remark, but it's, it's just, it's a, it's a difficult time. And I think we're just, just want to say, I think we're making the very best of it. So thanks everyone for all the input on that. I think we're good to move on. Uh, Matthew, any further uh, direction you would require on this to bring it back for the 19th? I didn't hear any real dramatic differences of opinion there. So it sounds like we're pretty good, but did you have anything else you wanted clarity on? No, I think I'm good. And uh, as I say, we can improve the projects, but then uh, have further conversations around timing for those ones where might be an option to move it to 2021 or if things are going well, move it back to 2020. Um, as things progress. So sure. it, uh, it really provides a little bit of flexibility, but also gives us our marching orders on some of those larger items that uh, have long lead time, such as a sidewalk plow. Yeah, this is going to be one of the most flexible budgets. I think anybody, any, everyone's passing right now. It's going to include a lot of those options. So everybody good with that then? So we'll move forward and bring everything back in the 19th. Any further comments from anyone? All good? Okay, great. Thanks a lot, uh, Matthew. Thanks for that report. We do have, uh, let me get my agenda here. We do have 6.4. We uh, That's staff report 30-2020. That's our 2020 cash flow, uh, cash flow projection. Say that three times fast. Uh, back to Matt for a quick review of, uh, please quick cut review of our cash flow situation and how everything sort of connects uh, and what the projections are for the end of the year. Okay, so it's going to take me about three and a half hours to get through this particular report. <laughs> yeah. Getting. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, so based on our last discussion on April 22nd, uh, Council asked for a cash flow projection to start to identify what the rest of the year could look like. And so we've already talked about the revenue at risk being uh, interest as well as the marina, the pool, uh, as, and some licensing that, uh, that we have um moving forward with uh, not knowing about marriages lotteries things like that but certainly uh this is more of a cash perspective and so it doesn't mean that we're going to have a, a massive deficit it just means from a cash perspective things are going to quite possibly grow from accounts receivable and therefore at the end of uh, 2020 we could have some fairly sizable monies owing to the municipality and therefore a significant draw on the cash. So from, uh, I want to clearly identify what the cash flow assumptions are. And so from the inflow perspective, uh, interest and in investment income uh, will be zero um, by the end of the year. So we're expecting about 50,000 to $60,000 in high interest uh, uh, interest over from the high interest account over the next uh, eight months. but. Uh, that's tempered with the fact that it's unlikely the um, equity uh, investment will have a positive return uh, this year. It, it is uh, improving, but we're still about $150,000 behind where we started the year. Uh, grants uh, that were included in the 2020 budget, we have no reason to believe they won't be received uh, in the course of this year. User fees, uh, I've already outlined what those 
um, could possibly be in terms of a risk perspective. Uh, there's also uh, some, uh, because we don't know when the marina will open or if the pool will open um, or marriages can be uh, undertaken, then we don't know the timing of those and the, the intended impact on revenue. Uh, debt will be issued, the assumption debt will be issued this year for the plow truck that was purchased uh, previously. And so that's for approximately 275,000, which will obviously uh, be in a cash inflow, water and wastewater uh, receivables. We expect them to climb uh, by about a month and a half's worth of uh, revenue. Uh, really, we don't know at this point, but certainly we're providing the late, uh, the waiver of the wait, late payment fee uh, for at least uh, the next 30 to 60 days. And then I'm expecting that uh, revenue, uh, or not the revenue, but certainly the receivable uh, to slow down for the remainder of this year as some uh, accounts might not uh, be paid on time. And then finally, uh, the, and this is just an assumption, it doesn't, uh, based on uh, anything other than uh, a best guess at this point, but perhaps only 66% of the final property tax billing will be paid uh, prior to December 31st. Um, this doesn't mean that we're going to lose that money. It just means that uh, payment plans and payments might be uh, spaced out into 2021. So with all of these assumptions, it's a stab in the, the dark at this point, a, a best guess. And as we more, know more information or as additional grants become available or we have a better understanding of the long-term impacts, then certainly we can modify that as we move forward. For the cash, cash outflows assumptions, salaries and non-salary expenses will be relatively on budget. 25% uh, of the education taxes will be paid in September, while 50, the remaining 50% will be paid in December. The first 25% was paid in March. Debt payments will continue to be paid uh, as expected. Capital projects, uh, just based on our previous conversation, would come to about 518,500 this year. And that's assuming that uh, we move forward with the recommendations for 2020. Uh, contractual payments to our various uh, partners will be made on time, such as Aqua, the OPP, uh, the Health Unit, uh, St. Lawrence Lodge, uh, the Joint uh, Services at the United Counties, which uh, all account for a large portion of our budget, and uh, the sidewalk plow and LED street lighting. If those projects were to move ahead, that they would be offset by the assurance of debt. Uh, therefore, no bottom line cash flow. Uh, impact. So when you flip the page to page 45, you can see um, exactly what that means. So we could have possible cash inflows between May 1st and December 31st of 6.2 million, while cash outflows could amount to 8.6 million. And so that's really what we're trying to, to demonstrate. That's how we end up with the 2.445. Large portions of that is simply related to um, the growing of receivables, uh, both from water and sewer, as well as from the perspective of uh, property taxes. So it doesn't mean that we would have a massive deficit. It just means that the money that is related to that revenue wouldn't be received until 2021. And so uh, really that's my report. I just, this is a, it's an iterative process where each time something changes, we make a change to the cash flow projection, update it, and then see what the effect of that is. If we decide to move a project forward into 2020 instead of leaving it to 2021, that will obviously have an impact. If we receive funding for a project that we were going to do in 2020 or 2021, that too will have an impact. And so this is a, a starting point and a point for discussion, but certainly it will become much better refined as we move through the next uh, weeks and months. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Open it up for comments, questions uh, uh, for Matt this evening on that report. Councillor Young? Well, it, as Matt said, it is a guesstimate. It's a very well thought out guesstimate, but I don't think we should um, panic <laughs> and make decisions yet based on that outcome. I think we should be aware that's a possibility, and that's what we did earlier on. So uh, let's let's just take it as a as a guide at the moment, and as it becomes updated during the year, we can uh, respond to it. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Young. Uh, Councillor Jansman, please. Um, a little bit uh, 
of what you mentioned a few minutes ago, Mayor Todd, with, with the salaries and the non-salary costs representing 50% of the cash flow expenses, um, has a review of, of the positions been done at all? You know, positions that, that cannot work effectively from home or positions that because of the limitations of the activities, um, just doesn't allow for it. Like, I'm just curious if, if we, if the first step has been kind of done, just a review of the various positions. 50% is, is a big number. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely is. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, any comment on that? So certainly we have reviewed that. Um, so to be clear, the uh, salaries only account for 25% of our total budget, whereas what I call non-salary expenses to be hydro, water, uh, memberships, uh, cost for um, computers, all of the licensing, um, travel, you know, all of those types of things. So we're taking absolutely every possible opportunity to um, save on those budgets and not uh, spend. Uh, we haven't taken the step of laying everyone off uh, at this point. And certainly there's only uh, a couple of positions out there that um, would really uh, qualify for that. Uh, the vast majority of our staff uh, is working from home, our office staff, and uh, certainly all of our uh, outside staff and our operations group is uh, continuing to work uh, full on. So uh, that's um, kind of how we've uh, viewed it at this point. But certainly what I was trying to demonstrate is that the, there's about $2.4 million in what I'll call supplies and services. Uh, some of which uh, just happens because the, the lights are on. And then uh, there's another large portion of the budget that's dedicated to debt as well as contractual services. So um, equally, you know, there's approximately uh, 25 to 30% that are just in those levies that we have really no control over uh, uh, paying in the course of this year. Uh, but certainly we're taking every advantage and every opportunity to reduce the non-salary expenses to, uh, to really drive home anything that we need to offset in terms of a loss of revenue. Thanks very much, Matt. Follow up, uh, Teresa? No, I did that's interesting because I did have notes to, uh, of, uh, you know, no training, I'm sure is our, you know, no training, no mileage, no, none of that's happening either, right? So- That's correct. Yeah. No, that's good, thank you. One, uh, one follow-up though on the salary expenses. I mean, it's something we may, we may well have to look at in, in, in the very near future is staffing, uh, seasonal staffing with, with regards to like the marina, the pool and so forth. I think we're gonna have to ask questions about how we operate down there, what the length of the season's going to be, what the anticipated losses uh, might be. I mean, we could possibly lose more uh, operating the marina in full, full out with full staff than we would if we operated say at a, you know, a skeleton crew or something like that. I think we're going to have to, there are a lot of questions that still need to be asked and answered with regards to uh, staffing uh, uh, through the rest of the year. And then of course, if we have other challenges, you know, all, everything's pretty much got to be on the table here with regards to, uh, to all costs, staffing and, uh, and, 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 and elsewhere. Uh, so I, I think it's something we, we definitely need to, to keep an eye on as we move forward. Any, uh, any further discussion on the cash flow uh, report? Oh, no. Yeah, Councillor Burton, did you have a, sorry, I washed your feed, but did you have a? Nope, my iPad's about to die. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll have to go get the cord. Stand by. <laughs> Anybody, any other comments on, on the cash flow? Obviously, we'll, we'll just, we'll keep this. I don't know if this needs to be on the item every, uh, as an item every two weeks, but we could, we definitely should have, uh, uh, we'll obviously need it on for the next, uh, the next meeting with regards to budget and, uh, and everything. But if we could just bring this back once a month or whatever, uh, we can talk about timing, Matthew, on this, this one uh, offline too, just so we've got everybody, uh, whenever there's any sort of uh, adjustment, adjustments at all, we bring it back. Okay. So everyone good with, uh, good with that? All right, so we'll move on to uh, 
item seven, uh, mayor's proclamation on an emergency preparedness week, which is, yeah, we're really prepared for emergencies, I think now. Uh, but that uh, proclamation reads, uh, emergency preparedness week, May 3rd through 9th, 2020. Whereas the town of Prescott does recognize the importance of emergency management in Ontario, and the goal of emergency preparedness week is to raise community awareness and the need to be prepared within 72 hours for the possibility of an emergency. And whereas during emergency preparedness week, Ontario residents will identify and learn about risk in their communities and how they can protect themselves. Knowing the potential hazards and risks you face, planning ahead and being prepared are the best steps to ensure that you and your family will survive an emergency or disaster. And whereas, although focused on personal preparedness, Emergency Preparedness Week also carries messages for business owners, municipal officials, and utility operators. Sharing business continuity and updating emergency plans are all just as crucial in assuring community preparedness. And whereas all levels of government have an important role to play in emergency preparedness and response, but ultimately emergency preparedness is the responsibility of each and every one of us. Uh, now, therefore, I, Mayor Brett Todd of the town of Prescott, do proclaim the week of May 3rd through 9th, 2020 as Emergency Preparedness Week and encourage all citizens to begin today and to learn how to prepare for a safer tomorrow. And this is dated, of course, uh, the 4th of May, 2020. And if we're not prepared for an emergency now, we're never going to be prepared. And I want to thank everyone, actually, as well, that's worked with us on the, uh, the emergency control group because it's uh, it's gone extremely well in Prescott under a, 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 a extraordinary times people have come together and that I can't say enough for everyone that's uh, helped us out on the on the emergency control group and our partners with uh, <clears throat> the health unit and uh, MPP Clark's office as well. Well, moving along, we have uh, one more item tonight on the, on the on the main part of the agenda. That's just a closed session. 8.1 is uh, purchase and sale. So we'll move into the closed session at 8.38. Uh, to address matters pertaining to purchase and sale. Uh, and this is, of course, under Section 239 2C of the Municipal Act 2001, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, and that the CAO treasurer, clerk, deputy clerk, and economic development officer remain in this electronic meeting. Do I have a mover, please? Moved by, I think, Councillor Jansman got in there first, and uh, Councillor Ostrander in there, second uh, to second that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion is carried, so we will uh, go into the closed session now uh, for a couple minutes before coming back to close out the meeting. <laughs> 